Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the City of Delray Beach's special meeting scheduled for Thursday, March 2nd, 2023 at 9 a.m. Please call the roll. Mr. Frankel? Present. Mr. Boylston? Present. Ms. Johnson? Present. Mayor Petrolia? And I am here. We have one meeting. First of all, let me make sure everybody's got their phone silenced so that when we're doing these presentations, they're not interrupted. And uh, we have one um, uh, item, and that is our public-private partnership proposal presentations for our public, public golf course. And you can take it away, Sarah. Oh, Mr. Moore. Oh, that's okay, because we were simply planning to offer the introduction in the manner in which you just described. However, I would like to offer a word or two that the fact that Director of Economic Development, Sarah Maxfield, is being asked to provide an overview in advance of the four presentations you all will enjoy today from the companies who've expressed an interest in collaborating with the City of Delray Beach with respect to a public-private partnership consideration for Delray Beach Municipal Golf Course. Given the recent experiences associated with this endeavor, we thought it would be appropriate to provide an overall timeline because, of course, the City had been collaborating with CBRE, our real estate consulting firm, to assist us in this effort and an initial update relative to the time frame and the work that's haven't been done thus far to get us to this point, we thought it'd be appropriate for you all to briefly have an update to that effect. Therefore, Director of Economic Development, Sarah Maxfield, has been asked to provide that overview as well as what we can all look forward to above and beyond today's presentation so that we all can move forward. With that, Ms. Maxfield, if you would, please. Good morning, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, Good morning. Very happy to be here this morning. Um, I just wanted to recap a little bit of where we've been and how we got here and very, very briefly so that everyone's on the same page and we have a reminder of, of what brought us here today. So um, in my, uh, as I began tenure here with the city of Delray Beach, one of the very first meetings I attended was the workshop meeting in the spring of 2021, which actually was the goal setting workshop for the city of Delray Beach and happened at the golf course. Um, the Commission identified the rehabilitation and redevelopment of the golf course as a priority at that meeting um, and understanding the significant cost associated with the city managed and funded redevelopment taking into full consideration the other outstanding needs throughout the city and that they also required imminent large investments. They directed staff to explore other creative opportunities to help the city preserve the golf course and elevate the condition of this valuable city asset. Since that time, staff has done quite a bit of due diligence to understand the various opportunities associated with this, what we could do to make this vision a reality. We benchmarked with other communities to better understand how they were addressing similar challenges. And um, in this post-COVID environment, it looks very different than it did prior uh, to that. Mm -hmm. A properly structured public-private partnership shares risk and expense among the partners. And finding the best development partner for a maximum city benefit was um, to bring to you as one consideration for this golf course redevelopment. Was, um, was our primary goal. This is a complicated process, and so we sought guidance uh, from subject matter experts with a very deep bench, and that's how CBRE came to be one of our partners. In April 2022, you can see at the very beginning of this timeline, that's where we start with our visual. We brought on CBRE as our partner to advise and guide us, and we've moved along in the process um, throughout the, the months following, um, including outreach to local golf groups, um, meetings individually with you all, workshops here to discuss what we, we saw as priorities for the RFP. You gave very um, clear direction and what you wanted as, as um, must-haves and wish and wish list items that were included in the RFP. Um, we had a pre-proposal conference that was open to the public at the property and a tour to discuss what you all were looking for and what the community expected to get in return. Um, the RFP was, uh, was released in August. S responses were due in November, and we moved forward with um, analysis, um, evaluation committee meetings, and the like. Uh, we had a workshop presentation here not too long ago um, where our consultants presented overviews of the financial analysis, construction analysis, and all of the things that they brought to the table to share with you all so that you could help narrow the field and, and make an informed decision about the pathway forward for this. 
We additionally had another public outreach meeting at the golf course, which was highly attended. Um, there were a lot of concerns expressed, and, and we have shared those with you all and um, taken those in consideration. Um, today, we're here to hear the four proposals that you all wish to invite for um, in-person proposals so that you may hear them firsthand from the developers, ask your questions, and get some clarifications. Before we get to there, I just wanted to mention that we do have in our audience our partners with CBRE. We have with us um, in person Matt Kazaya, Director in Project for Project Management, Chris Smiles, Senior Vice President of CBRE, Kirk Sidwell, Financial Analyst, Richard Singer, National Golf Foundation, and then online um, joining us remotely, we have Leanne Korst, who's the Southeast Regional Manager, Michael McShay, the Executive Vice President, Tess Fleming, our Transaction Manager, and Shane Millen, the Director of Financial, the Financial Consulting Group. So they are also here for, um, f at your pleasure and for your needs through this process. I wanted to touch briefly on, on what we've heard from public meetings, written in electronic surveys. What you see before you is um, just a snapshot of, of one of the questions that was um, most important. What do you consider to be the most important aspect of the proposed golf course redevelopment from one to six, one being most important? As you see here, um, one 18 hole championship golf course all the way down to number six which is new housing and I would just like to mention that this reflects fairly closely to the priorities that you all put into the RFP um, and what you requested that the proposers consider Sarah let me ask you a question real quick um, who responded to these this, uh, this graph this was, at this time when I took this, this snapshot, there was 250 respondents. Um, it's been um, circulated uh, through our social media channels. It's been on our website. It's been on um, QR code sheets that we've placed throughout the city through different public, um, public meetings that have been going on. Okay, so it's a, ver a variety of areas that you're getting this response, not just the survey, but other, okay. Correct. Thank you. This is just a, a random sampling of the, there are two open-ended questions in this survey of what we heard from the question, what do you hope to see as part of this redevelopment? As you see, um, better conditions, better fairways, is, it comes up quite often. Um, renovation, um, that it doesn't happen and they simply repair the facility. Uh, needed structural repairs, refurbishment of golf course, so on and so forth. Also, what's your biggest concern? Traffic was, was one of the main concerns. It, it comes up um, multiple times in this question. Um, downsizing of the course and congestions, um, that it won't get restored because we can't find a solution to this challenge that we're facing as a city. Those are all um, considerations that we heard more than once. I wanted to make everyone aware that we are still listening. We have upcoming public meetings on Friday, March 17th at the Fieldhouse at Old School Square at 9 a.m., Thursday, March 23rd at 6 p.m. at Pompeii Park, and Saturday, March 25th, 9 a.m. at the Del Race Women Tennis Center. We did this at Commission's request to continue to socialize these ideas and hit some other parts of the of the city so that we have the so that residents have the opportunity to to come and share what what their thoughts are there are additional um, sheets all around city hall with a qr code for anyone who wants to still uh, participate in this survey it will be open until um, a decision is made so um, i wanted to uh, kick us off and get us started there was a rent uh, purchasing did a randomization uh, for order for this presentation and this is the order in which we will proceed each respondent has up to 30 minutes for their presentation followed by a commission directed discussion and Q&A does anyone have any questions before we kick this off the no we do not if that unless that was requested ahead of time from purchasing that was not a consideration CGHP Development and Hensel Phelps, you're up. This is forward, this is back. 
so our no. presentation's loaded and we just she, go. Yep, she's going to load it I'm up. Sorry. Um, Sarah, we have a question. Sorry. 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 Vice Mayor. Oh, Mayor. We were just talking and we thought it was alphabetical. Online, it's alphabetical. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. Whatever, the, whatever the pleasure for everyone. We else. actually did a randomizer. Okay. There's a program, and we randomly selected who okay. went first to make it fair. Yes, gotcha. C change. Thank you. Yes. So you'll set us up, and then I'll just. Well, there'll be a 30 minute clock somewhere that we're watching. Right oh, I didn't see it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Corey Olson. I'm the operations manager for Hensel Phelps uh, here in South Florida. Um, so, our agenda for today um, is really just to try to kind of focus on some of the points that. Um, we feel like we need to, to carve out from the proposal that we submitted. Um, we did hear some of the public hearings uh, here over the course of the last few weeks, and we just want to make sure that our vision was, was clearly cast, uh, uh, both for the commission and, and the public at large. So really our plan is to kind of go through a quick introduction of our team. Uh, we, we know there were some questions raised on that, so we think that's important to reinforce really who we are and how we're going about this. Um, we'll hit on the major components of the, of the vision and really how we saw this whole project coming together, uh, touch briefly on the phasing aspects, and then we really want to spend some time on the deal options. Um, we think we have a very unique business model. Um, we, we can also work in a very traditional model. We want to make sure that you understand those options that we gave, um, really focusing on the one that we submitted initially, but letting you know we are flexible. Uh, and then ultimately we'll talk about the community benefits and what the overall economic impact of that is. So again, Corey Olson, operations manager with Hensel Phelps. So just a very quick background on Hensel Phelps. Um, we've been in business since 1937. Uh, we're actually the largest employee-owned construction company in the US. Uh, we have 3,800 employees. I bring that up because I think it's important to know that we come from a culture of sharing. We share all the profits of our company with our people. Um, we work really hard to develop relationships with our clients. I've had clients for 20 plus years. I've spent my entire career with Hensel Phelps. Um, but we want you to know we're going to act as a fiduciary on behalf of the city, okay? We are not a transaction-based company. We're not worried about any one project. This would be a great first project for us with the city of Delray, but we want you to know that we're really looking at the best long-term interest for everybody involved because I intend to work another 20 years for Hensel Phelps, and our name is as important as anything in this, okay? So um, we did hear some questions raised on our length of time with uh, our capital group partner and so I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, again, we've been in business for 80 plus years. Um, Mario and capital group have been in this space uh, for 35 going on 40 years. When we found capital group, they were by far the most creative and hardworking people in the space. And so we created this partnership um, really at the end of 2019 going into 2020. Um, we are working on three other uh, public-private partnerships right now um, due to Mario's creativity and really getting us into that space. The way I like to describe us is Mario is the executive chef of the restaurant and we're the owner of the restaurant, okay? We do not exist without one another. So please don't question our partnership. Look at the creativity of the deal that we put together, the strength of Hensel Phelps, and how we intend to go do business together, okay? So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mario. All right, thanks, Corey. Uh, I think the big differentiator between us and any other uh, proposer is that we are a master developer with a master developer concept approach. What does that mean? Well, our goal is that we're not the city against the developer and have two different agendas. We see ourselves as the fiduciary agents of the city. And we are the only ones who are proposing not to buy the property, it is an option, but we recommend what we believe is in the best interest of the city. And our project is all about leasing the property. It always belongs to the city. And our job and our concept is to mitigate risk. So we provide all the money, we provide all the design, we provide all the outreach with the community and your input. We will build it, we will operate it, we will lease it, and we will manage it all the way through the end. So it's not like we're coming in, we're going out, or after it's completed, it goes through a traditional loan, and if somebody defaults, then it becomes a legal battle. 
Our approach is proactive, no defaults. We monitor, we're partners with our operators, and all our operators are pre-selected. They're all identified, they're here. So we know that we're not gonna be doing an RFP to find out should we get, who are we gonna get as a golf operator. We already spend the time and the money to go identify excellent players that fit the profile of what Delray needs. So that's how we're gonna go about it. And the three key uh, players are Todd Fabry from Richmond Group, which is the fourth or seventh largest in the country for workforce housing development. They own 126,000 units. They only control and manage their own units. We have Joe Champ, who's our hotel operator, who's a former Marriott executive and, and controls a lot of hotels. So when we say we're gonna do something, you have the names of the people, you have their profiles, you have their history, you have their hotels, you have their restaurant. You can check all of that. It's not, oh, trust us, we'll do it, and then you'll see. And what if we don't see? What if it doesn't happen? So it's all about risk mitigation. And last but most important is Matt Galvin, who unfortunately can't be here today because he's in England preparing one of his major golf uh, events there. But Matt is a leader in the country in operating golf courses. He had a lot of experience, and I think you got a lot of very good compliments in the CBRE report relating our golf operator. With that, Corey, I'll turn it over to you for it. Yeah, and again, we just wanted to kind of show the depth of our team here. It's a little hard to see, obviously, but we wanted to show that we have contemplated the entire team that's going to be required for this project, and it's really ultimately about um, delivering for those operators that Mario described. So um, with that, we're going to get into um, some of the components of the project. Um, again, this is something we really want to point out that we think is a differentiator with our proposal. Um, we are offering to replace all nine of the wells in the entire water uh, infrastructure system. This is where this project really started. And we're going to hear some of this uh, from our partner Beth here in a minute about the history of the job. But we recognized if you don't fix this water issue now, um, why would you spend the money to then go put a new golf course on top of it, give away some of the land, and then have to go back in and tear into all of that? And we're offering to do it for you, okay? The proposal we've put forward for you has a revenue share model that allows for us to fully subsidize that on behalf of the public. And we're not sure that, that that's the case with all the other proposals that you received. So that was, you know, we used your $15 million budget. We put some escalation factors on that. So we have over $17 million to, to replace that in its entirety, okay? So we want you to know that we recognize for all the noise, we'll say, on the golf course, it's really the essentialness of the water that, that really spurred this thing in the first place, okay? So with that, I do want to turn it over to Beth and have her talk about the golf course. Okay. Good morning. Um, my name is Beth Daniel. I played 29 years on the LPGA Tour, and for th over 30 years I have been a Delray Beach resident. So I live right down the street here. Um, for 25 years I did a free clinic at the golf course for the city of Delray Beach, and I also participated with Sandra Erickson, one of the teaching pros, in an after-school program at Delray Beach golf club for Carver Middle School students. Um, I want to give you a little history of how I became involved in this. Uh, about 12 years ago, someone from the golf course contacted me and said, can you help put together a budget to regress Delray Beach Golf Club because it was in need of it? So I brought in Roy Case, who was an architect. He's since passed away. He was an architect, he designed Okahili, he did Osprey Point, he did a lot of public golf courses, so I brought Roy in for that reason. So we gave, we put together a budget to regrass, and then we also put in that budget to put in a new irrigation system because we felt it would be silly to regrass the golf course and not have an irrigation system that could handle the new grassing. So we did that and submitted it, and then we heard, well, we can't afford to do that. So several years later, the same person came back to me and said, can you put together another budget? So Roy and I put together another budget, same thing, we can't afford to do it. So um, Roy is the one that came up with the idea to sell off some of the land along Atlantic Avenue and that would pay for the cost of redoing the golf course. Um, 
So we talked about that, but then once again, nothing was done, but here we are today, and every proposal has land that's on Atlantic Avenue or somewhere within the golf course to help offset the cost. Um, I associated myself with this group because I feel like they have the best interest of the golf course, the city, and the residents, and the people that play the golf course at hand. They really care about what, what the city wants and what the residents want. Um, I'm a consultant to the golf design and the golf professionals. This course has a rich history behind it, not only of it being a Donald Ross and a Dick Wilson design, nine holes of Donald Ross, nine holes Dick Wilson, two acclaimed um, architects. Um, and we want to preserve that. We want to preserve that history. We're not looking to build some different golf course. We're looking to keep the same base of this golf course and make it better. Um, after the meeting with the residents the other night, there was a lot of talk about the Donald Ross Society and getting them involved. Well, our team is the only team that has the endorsement of the Donald Ross Society, and I've been speaking with their president their, on, constantly about the redesign, and they would be heavily involved in the redesign as consultants to us um, if we were picked. Um, we're going to build a championship golf course or redesign championship golf course. All that means basically is 7,000 yards. If you have 7,000 yards, you're a championship golf course. Our scorecard, I don't think it's up here, but it, it reads 7240 from the back tees. Um, so 7,240 yards from the back tees. Our driving range is 340 yards in length. That enables us to put tees, not mats and grass tees, on the front and back side of the tee. Um, our, our driving range is also 150 yards wide, which is very wide for a driving range. Um, the current range at the golf course is maybe 230 yards long and about 100 yards wide in its widest point. So it's a much larger driving range. Um, we, um, we will have top tracer, track man. Uh, there'll be, we have a uh, 14,000 square foot putting green, which is enormous. Um, we also have a chipping and, um, chipping and short game area at the back of the range. There are endless opportunities in this driving range and golf course to do various community events, um, clinics, uh, things like that. Um, we, we've proposed to put in a new maintenance facility, which the course is in desperate need of, and we would also um, talk to the city about also incorporating Lakeview, um, which is about a half a mile down the road. Um, I talked about that. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, incorporating that into the renovation if the city wanted to do that. Um, our clubhouse would be on Atlantic Avenue. You can see the, the rendering of it. So that would take the access off of Homewood, which I would think the residents would be very happy about. Um, it's, it's been said that our clubhouse is smaller than the current clubhouse. In fact, it is larger. The clubhouse would be 20,000 square feet, plus we would have outdoor seating, um, which is covered. The we want the clubhouse to be a destination. It would have a, a great restaurant and it would be a, a good place to choose for weddings. Um, any kind of community events could be held there. It would be large enough for that. Um, it, of course, would have a golf shop, locker room, golf cart storage, and um, we intend to put in golf suites, 
which are, it's like a virtual, um, you would go in a room and you can, it's not just golf, you can play any sport in these virtual suites. So you have a computer screen and you play games. So it's a, a great destination for parties or other functions. Um, there's also been talk about greens fees and you know being too expensive. Well, anytime you renovate, greens fees get a little bit higher, but we intend to keep our greens fees reasonable um, and affordable. And they'd be structured to favor city residents. They would get a discount. Junior golfers, of course, would get a discount. Um, and residents would also have access earlier than the general public to tee times. Um, our outlook is for community first. And that's why, like I said earlier, I associated myself with this group. So I'll turn it back Thank over you, to you guys. Yeah, so really, you know, you tell how passionate we are as a team about the public components, right? And between the water and the golf that we've just described, that's $33 million um, worth of improvements. Um, that has to get paid for by somewhere, right? We're presenting a model um, that is, is fully subsidized by the private sector. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. I think we can hit some of it in the, um, in the Q&A session because we're running a little short on time. But, you know, obviously um, we recognize the amount of land that's, uh, that's being made available is really conducive uh, to the workforce housing uh, that Mario talked about and what we're doing in partnership with Richmond. So we have 312 units. Um, we really tried to find the right fit, uh, kind of medium density, if you will, uh, because we recognize that, you know, traffic is going to be a concern. Um, but again, for us to provide something uh, that is fully subsidized, um, we recognize that this is probably one of the best uses of the land there. Just right. one last point. We're the only uh, proposer that's providing 100% workforce housing up to 120% of median income. So our whole model is designed for that. And that's a key component. If companies want to move into your city, one of the first questions they ask is how much workforce housing, quality workforce housing is available in your city. So we're providing 100% of that. And then the 128-room hotel, again, we, we've heard some commentary on whether that's really the right fit uh, for that place, you know, necessarily across the street from, from the high school and all that. But, you know, our vision of this is if we're going to provide a destination and we're going to want people to come and stay and be a part of the community and on property and to have these events and weddings and those types of things, um, we really tried to find the best fit. And in partnership with, with CHAMP, um, you know, currently we have the Spring Hill Suites. We feel like that's kind of the right size and, and uh, price structure uh, that would fit there. Um, but again, we, we're flexible in this. So ultimately, if we're picked because we're the best team, um, we, will, we will size the project and the density to what best fits the, the city uh, and the public at large. And, and it is proven, we have our economists here and our team for questions during Q&A, but it's proven that a, a hotel is an economic engine. It costs very little to the city because you don't have to support kids and schools and all these other things. And these are people that come here with excess money to spend. Okay, uh, just very briefly on the schedule. I know it's a little hard to read from up here, but we recognize, you know, really uh, first half of 23 is all about you picking your team, uh, getting through those contract negotiations. We would hope that the pre-development efforts could start by mid-summer. Um, and then there's going to be a fair amount of, um, you know, rezoning land entitlements and all that that are required. Um, but we want to point out, and again, is we are looking to start the water first thing. That's, that's the first thing we want to go do. And we'll do that in conjunction with the golf course uh, redevelopment um, so that all that can be started by really mid-24, uh, a little over 12 months of construction of that. Um, so that uh, you're ready for that uh, 2025 winter season. And then, um, you know, the true private components of the apartments and the hotel uh, would be thereafter. But we want to get all the public uh, amenities back online first, okay? So, uh, again, with about 10 minutes to go, um, we understand there could have been um, I don't want to say confusion, but maybe just not, you know, totally understanding the different business models that we proposed. Mario is really going to focus on the one that we submitted because we believe that is the best deal for the city. In fact, we know that's the best deal for the city. Sometimes it can come off as a little complicated, um, but we'd rather work through that with you and give you the best deal in the end. Um, but we are certainly willing to go uh, the traditional model as well. So I'll let Mario talk to these. Yeah. Well, thanks, Corey. So why the master lease concept? Uh, you know, to supplement what Corey said, we are providing the least amount of risk for the city. 
So we are providing all the tenants that follow that. So what is the difference between the master lease concept and traditional financing? And you'll see that we have all three options other than, than our master lease because anybody can do any other traditional financing of, of this project. We are the only ones who can do it this way. Now, why is that important? We are mitigating the risk for the city. We are providing all of the funding. We don't need to make money on top of the mortgage payment that we're going to borrow, you know, like a traditional developer. We make our money up front doing the project just like anybody else. And then we make money when the city is successful. We make money with the operators and we stay and monitor the operators. That's part of our agreement, just like a, a franchise agreement. So not only do we make sure that we don't get into a condition of default uh, with a tenant, because that's kind of the risk for anybody, right? So what we do is we monitor them, we check the financials, we know how it's trending, how it's going, and we will help them because of our fiduciary duty to you. We will help them realign, and if they don't realign, we replace them. So you will never hear about it, you won't see it, it's just going to be seamless. Just like any big franchise company comes in and if the operator doesn't do well, the, the corporate can come over and take over and nobody who's been eating there before or after will ever know the difference. So we're all proactive to protect the city. And when we go and do this, remember that our incentive is we're putting 100% of the money. So our incentive is to make sure that we monitor this, this right and we're not in and out. We're staying the long haul. We're staying with you. So we want to make sure that this goes well, and it's our duty to monitor these tenants, to replace them as needed, and really, you really have nothing to lose because we can do what everybody else does. Nobody can do what we do. So hopefully you pick us. We negotiate it. And if you think that we're still not the right fit for you, you can always go back to what everybody else can do. But remember, anybody can do this traditional financing, and it's always that the developer has to go borrow money and the developer has to mark up for their risk. And at the end, the tenants pay more, about 30% more than the traditional. What does that mean? It means that they have a higher risk of failure. They have a lot more to support. And we're all about the success of our end users and to monitor uh, their well-being so that it doesn't become the city's problem. A good example is you have a city to the south of you called Boca. They had a project called Boca Tica, traditional financing, right? They build it, the developer did well for 10 years, no problem, all of a sudden he got in financial trouble. 10 year legal battle, Wells Fargo took it back. It became a hot potato because most people don't understand that banks don't want to take properties back. And they decided that to get it off their books, this hot potato, they just demolished everything and gave it back as a gift for a dollar to the city. What happened to the city? They're still trying to get out of it. 10 years of no income, there are people not playing golf. That's traditional financing for you. It's reactive. Ours is proactive. We will never leave. We only leave if you fire us. If you say, you know what, you're not as good as you say you were, and you replace us. But you always stay in control of your own destiny. We are your fiduciary agent. We want to make sure that we're proactive and protecting the city. And we make money when you make money. One analogy I, I like to use here, just to kind of simplify this for everybody, um, you know, it's as if, it's almost like an Airbnb model. Say you came to us and you said, you know what, we want to main, we have a piece of property, um, we'd like to maintain control of the building. So all we're doing is we're acting as your agent to go build you these facilities, and then we're going to bring you the tenants to fill the Airbnb for the next 30 years, right? If we don't do a good job of filling your calendar, then you get to replace us as the operator downstream. But you maintain control. It's your facilities. We've built these on your behalf, um, and you're in total control of those, unlike the deal that Mario just described. At, right. uh, and uh, and we put 100% okay. of the money. Right. We're, so we have an incentive we're arranging sure for the financing well. for you. We're bringing you the money, and we're handing you the facilities. No one else is going to let those facilities revert to you in that right. scenario because, again, we're looking for this long-term relationship. When okay. these buildings revert to you, after you discount them by 25%, because in 30 years they'll be old, they'll need renovation. Those buildings, just with a 3% future value escalation, they're worth $318 million. That's net money to the city. If you don't want to get into property management, you can re-up us on continuing to manage it. All the tenants will stay. We'll make sure that their leases are longer than the term. So you still have the tenants. You could just collect the rent. You have no, there's no more 
master lease payments, so that money goes all to you. You could easily refinance it because now you have a track record of income stream, or you could just say we're selling it at market rate and we would love to buy it at market rate. So you end up with a $318 million paid for asset at the end of our cycle, which nobody else can offer. Okay. And again, you know, the other options to the right here, again, we believe that's the best deal for the city. You maintain control of the dirt. You maintain control, maintain control of the facilities. Um, but if that's just a little, you know, it doesn't seem like something that the city's up for, we can do any traditional model thereafter, right? We could do a master facility lease just on the public components, or then we do um, a land lease or a land sale on the private. That gets a little, you know, a, a little convoluted maybe, um, or you know, we could simply do a traditional land lease or a land sale. We're happy to do any of those, but again, we'd like for you to maintain control of all this. Okay, this is just a, another shot of this, really kind of showing um, kind of how some of that structure looked. We didn't want it to be too busy before we had an opportunity to look at the, the original model um, versus the other options that are there, okay? Okay. So again, ultimately, you know, this is just kind of a recap of all the things that we talked about, but you know, we recognize this is being done for the, for the citizens of Delray Beach, right? So we wanna point out all the um, community benefits, right? So again, we're gonna keep harping on it, but we're gonna replace all of the water infrastructure fully subsidized by our private um, partners. Uh, the the uh, vast majority of the, of the uh, community amenities uh, that Beth talked about. Um, we talked about the discounted uh, rates on golf. Um, one of the things that we also had in there were some pedestrian and bike trails. Uh, we heard me, a little feedback on that. Let yeah, me go add ahead to quickly. that because when we do a lot of preliminary work, we met with a lot of the community before even this was, was out there because we were eyeing this project and we figured eventually it would come out. So everybody's telling me, why would we put all this money just for the golfers? Our approach is this is an asset for the entire community. The entire community should benefit from it. So putting bike trails in, in, and we have great examples. You know, we heard some comments that that's crazy to put a bike trail. Well, obviously, we're not going to make it dangerous. Obviously, it's going to be planned <laughs> properly, and and uh, and it's been done before. So that's very important that we are all inclusive, and this becomes an economic engine and a destination and the other bookend of what you're already successful doing with the rest of of Delray. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next one. Okay, we invite. To yeah, Kevin, so Kevin. we're going to bring up Kevin and we'll have him introduce himself and Good morning. My name is Kevin Crowder. I'm an economist, economic developer. I own a firm called Business Flare. Uh, we primarily work for the public sector, cities and CRAs doing economic development, economic impact, real estate analysis. Um, the methodologies that I'm going to tell you about are the ones we use for our public sector clients. It's the ones that I'm using currently in a additional assignment as the interim executive director of the North Miami CRA. Um, but when we look at the economic impact, we look at two things. We look at the impact during construction, which will be about 704 jobs with about $77 million in earnings, $192 million in overall economic impact. Once the project's open, about ongoing 382 total jobs between the direct, indirect, and induced benefits with about $20 million annual earnings and about $53 million in annual economic impact. If we're fortunate enough to be selected, we'll do a more in-depth analysis where we're able to help you understand where these jobs are going to be created, which industries, which occupations, uh, by gender, by age, so you'll be able to, to identify those opportunities to benefit your, your workforce that lives in Delray Beach. We'll also analyze the additional taxable value impact that the project may have on adjacent properties in the area around it. The other piece we look at is we look at the fiscal impact. So you see on the slide, uh, and Mario mentioned the delivery of the $318 million value at the end of the term. About $881 million in the annual revenue sharing. And then you have the $173 million investment that Mario, Corey, and their team will be making. That's about $140 million in the private uses and about $33.4 million in the public uses. So we use the, the methodology to estimate our property taxes based on, uh, in fact, based on the presentation that the Palm Beach Property Appraisers Office made to the Florida Government Finance Officials uh, Association Conference and came up with a conservative estimate, the same one we use for our public sector clients of about $88 million. The other thing to think about is 
Additionally, those $33 million in public investments, public component investments that the team is making, if you think of that in terms of capitalizing that as a lease payment, it has an, a lease equivalent value of another $2 million per year is what that amount would represent in a lease payment to the city, so that additional value. Um, and, and as we said, there's a $318 million asset that will be delivered to the city at the end of the term. So now we've got another 30 minutes of question and answer here, um, but again, we just you know want to really reiterate. We'd like for you to to pick us because we're the best team ultimately, right? And you know we hope you heard some of that passion today to let you know. You know we really see this as a partnership with the city moving forward. We're very flexible in how we ultimately deliver this and honestly what it actually is. Um, so you know as you go through your your interviews today, uh, we, we really kind of ask you to think about some of these things that we, we focused on being as di differentiators, and, uh, and we look forward to hopefully having the opportunity to work with you. So thank you. Thank Great you. presentation. Thank you, Corey, Mario, Beth, and Kevin. So appreciate it. Um, so at this point, we'll turn to the uh, commission for questions. I'll start with uh, I'm gonna Mr. Go Boylston. First, first in round one? You got it. <laughs> okay. I'll go the other end and the next one. So one, thank you. Um, for obviously showing interest in this exciting project. I want to start off with um, there's no concerns for me in regards to the partnership here and the track record. Um, the, the pages just of, of references and projects just go on and on and on in your proposal. So I, I have no concerns. Thank there. you. Um, tell me a little bit about the, um, our, our Don, uh, Donald Ross nine holes in the back. I noticed in your current layout it's very different. Our, you know, the current back nine plays across the canal twice. I know, you know, that's really important to our golfers. It's, it's a moment to bring in here. It's a big change. And I'm curious about that because you're the, as you mentioned, you're the only organization with, um, that involved the Donald Ross mm -hmm. Foundation. Yeah. Um, this, well, you can see it does play across twice. It's not, say, we had to reroute because of taking this land the, the north nine holes, which mm -hmm. was the Dick Wilson nine holes, is running more north-south than it currently does. These holes down here are, seven of our nine holes are preserved as the current holes. They may not be numbered mm -hmm. on, the, on the nine, because I think the nines, the nines now have changed. This is now the front nine. It used to be the back nine. Okay. It's changed a few times. But all of these holes from, um, well, it would be numbered four, five. Um, you come across here, and then you've got 13, 14, 15, 16, and six, which would be like the current par three over is, the canal. Is layout all those lay proposal. all those are laid out. They they're not changing. Those okay. are not changing at all. They might change in numbers, but those are the Donald Ross holes. So seven of the nine would remain preserved. And the other two holes, we will have the Donald Ross Society come in and we will design those so that they are Donald Ross designed holes. And we, we will also do that with the Dick Wilson holes. We'll design those like Dick Wilson. Good. So I, I appreciate the clarification. The reason I ask is because in your proposal, you don't have this layout. Um, so I'm I think it's a clarification. It, it, okay, this so layout, is, this really lay, this layout is a clarification from the initial oh, one. So then, well, yeah. so then that, this is perfect for my follow-up because um, Another clarification, your rendering show four-story buildings. Your, your proposal mentions three, five-story buildings. No, we actually have four. That's four. A, it's four-story. Yeah. Okay. Because we know that Delray is maximum four-story. Follow-up? Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's not yeah. really the case in but, our city, but that we're not a max four-story. <laughs> maybe it depend should Depend on be. who you ask in the crowd. Really. <laughs> and, where, and where you're building. And where you're building, mm -hmm. but... Um, We'd love to do five if you let us, but yeah, I think I, it, it, No, we found the best fit. Yeah. We really I, I think we're, we're going any direction. It's not that direction. To be honest, we were toggling, <laughs> to be honest, we were toggling the private income streams to get you to a net zero mm. so right. that, we didn't, that we didn't overcome some density sure, factor sure. that's going to... 
So in addition to that, it does say including affordable workforce and market rate housing, yet you clarified that today that it's 100% workforce? Yes. Yes. Up to, up okay. to workforce. Okay, great. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to go by what was said today and in today's presentation on yes. some of those clarification. Um, hey, I think uh, I think the swing suite concept, I've been in one. They're really exciting. But Spring Hill suite. No, swing. The swing suites. Oh, swing. We have, we have our, well, we have our partner here. It's, yeah, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Um, however, when I'm looking, when we are looking for amenities um, for our community to be featured in this project, um, I'm personally looking for um, amenities that won't require a, a, a fee. Um, so yes, really exciting. The 17, you know, uh, 76 and all that was really exciting. But I'm, I'm more leaning towards some of the other um, outdoor activities and, of course, the expansion of, a, uh, you know, our clubhouse and so forth. Um, I think I the last there, thing I have is just a sticking point f for, for me is the, is the hotel. Um, obviously, it's a little bit of a sticking point with the community. But for me, um, if we are going to take, you know, a small piece of this property um, of this 160 acres and develop it, we want to develop it at, um, you know, looking at what use has the, the least effect on traffic, which is residential, hands down. Hotels come with workforce. 1776 with the swing suites comes with workforce. And in addition to that, our clubhouse could be hosting events while the Spring Hill Suites is hosting corporate events. So now we have two events happening on the property at the same time. Matter of fact, that could be most weekends. So that's really, that, that is really my concern, is where we have pa you know, passive residential, but then you add this other element on that could create a, a, a lot more traffic. So that's just so we know, that's, that's my concern in regards to the hotel component. Can, 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 part, of, part of the design team, we've addressed uh, that, we, that was a concern. And we've designed it so that we would meet code for parking, and then a, po a portion of the parking is going to be shared. And I don't know if you realize it by our drawings, but the front parking is actually a deck that is maybe three feet off the ground. So we have two levels of parking there. So I think we have ample parking. Parking's oh, not my concern. The traffic, oh, the traffic, traffic in and out. Yeah. And then we have our, our traffic engineer that are in our team that know this uh, intersection very, very well. They have suggestions, so once we are selected, we will work with you to adapt. You know, this is a snapshot of our vision. And once you select us, then we will sit with you, and you will have straight, clear-cut line items. If we eliminate the hotel, what does it do? There's that much money that the hotel was subsidizing the public sector. So you will be part of the decision-making to find the optimum scenario of what you want. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad to hear you say that because you answered my last question, and everyone's going to get this question, is your willingness to negotiate with sure, us? Of course. And, and I realize that that is a, a give and take conversation, as you just, as you just pointed out. So I, pre I appreciate that. Um, that. Those are all my questions. Thank, um, you. And thank you again. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Commissioner Johnson. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so happy to see you here. I'm excited because this is a project that I think is going to change the city of Delray Beach for the better. Because, as you said, once upon a time we did have a first-class golf course, but now not so much, maybe. Um, I have so many questions I could take the entire 30 minutes. First of all, I'd like to ask, this is your first venture together, and so far, so no? No, no, no. no. This, said, no. Uh, we've, we've been partnered together for four years, and, and we're okay. currently... Uh, developing three other projects together. Okay, just a working history unknown, newly formed entity. I didn't know what that yeah. meant. Yeah, and, and yeah. Th that Every entity is a Ansel Phelps entity. So they created that to, to create a specialty within their company for P3 division. So they have a traditional development. We're the P3 division of Ansel Phelps. So this is really a specialty business. I'm very uh, thankful and proud to uh, have been selected by their team and you can imagine an 87-year-old company with 3,800 3, uh, partner employees. Uh, they're very selective about how so a lot rests. Thank you. So a lot rests with your being successful, should you be chosen, um, because Hensel Phelps has a history, and the first out of the shoot has to be great, successful Correct. for others. Well, good luck. And, and this would not be the first. We are, you know, we're... We're Can you two, tell me and, about two and three years ahead on a, on a couple other pursuits as well. So, Would you so, be able to tell me yeah, within certainly. two or three um, minutes? Yeah, so Hensel Phelps actually did a direct contract with the city of Fort Lauderdale to replace uh, or rebuild the aquatic center, uh, for those of you that are familiar with that mm -hmm. on, out on the beach. So we built the 27-meter dive tower, uh, the, the only one in the, in the western hemisphere there. And it was uh, in the process of that um, project where we met uh, Mario and Capital Group 
And um, you know, we were on some other pursuits at that time, but as we got to looking at this property together, um, you know, the city owns the International Swimming Hall of Fame uh, buildings, mm -hmm. uh, and they provide that to the Hall of Fame for a dollar a year to live uh, in there for the next 30 years, and those are past their useful life. And so Mario came up with a concept to, again, provide you know, a near net zero solution to that by bringing private um, partners to the table in a revenue share model. Okay. So we were picked for that in, in uh, 2021, um, and we're in the pre-development eff efforts of that now and should be starting construction the end of this year, early next. Very good. Um, yeah, thank so that's, you. you bet. Thank you for that. Uh, my second concern, and I'm gonna end it with this, I'd like to hear a little bit more about your 100% workforce. I heard 120%, which is the yeah. top. It's gonna be the uh, a mixed income uh, facility. So we're gonna have from 60% of median. So you're gonna go from the bottom all the way up to All the, the way to 120. Up to 140. Yeah. Right. Okay. Workforce well, 120. Down. No, yeah, sorry, Some 120. cities go yes, to 140, 120 here. and here we're limited to 120. Very good. Well, but yes, we have to have mixed uh, mixed income. Very good. You, but now you don't know it. tried to log on, but you know, we couldn't get on. And again, that's all about you know finding what the city wants versus the revenue share that's gonna be available. Exactly, that's a very interesting concept. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Oh, wow. I thought you had a bunch of questions. Yeah. <laughs> Vice Mayor. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, Ms. Daniel, I think the last time I saw you was at the Jamie Farr Toledo Classic a couple of years ago. <laughs> That's where I grew up. It's great to see oh, you. Oh, did all. you really? Yeah, yeah. At Toledo. Nice. Absolutely. Holy Toledo. <laughs> um, I had a couple of questions. One, the, it, and it was a great presentation. The, the graphics are great. The presentation was great. My questions were about. It seemed like you highlighted in the presentation uh, this is, would be the least risk to the city because uh, you're the master developer, fiduciary, agent of the city. What other communities have you done this program plan in? In the mixed use like we have here, is, it is a first. Okay. However, Ensel Phelps has done plenty of projects that they have listed where they're the fiduciary agent of, of the project that has uh, some retail and the, the, the kind of the novel approach here is adding their residential component. And that's why we pick Richmond, because they run 126,000 units that they own. They don't run it for other people. So that's why we thought it was important to bring it in here. But this is the business model we're doing together at the International Swimming Hall of Fame in the city of Fort Lauderdale right now. Okay. just does not have the residential component. It's, it's commercial office. It's, it's convention retail. space, restaurants, retail. It's got everything but the residential. Okay. And again, we're, we're willing to, to tailor, you know, if you're not comfortable in the retail space, well, maybe that, you know, we certainly would be willing to lease, lease that land, buy that land, whatever. We can, we can yeah. really tailor this, whatever fits you best. Certainly appreciate the flexibility. Yeah. Um, the second question I had was you have a slide that says schedule and phasing with the timeline, the one that you said it's hard to read. Yeah. Phase four apartment complex. I don't recall anything about apartments. Well, that's, no, a that's the workforce housing. housing. Yeah, we yeah. sorry, we use those interchangeably. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Just yes. wanted to clarify yep. that. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. you bet. All right. Very good. Just a couple of questions because most of them were answered. Um, who maintains the buildings and the course during that least time of uh, so least time? For each component, each partner that is like Todd. Todd's company is responsible to do the property management of the apartments, the workforce housing. Okay. Matt Galvin's responsible for doing Morning the, Star. Yep. Morning Star for doing the golf operation. You know what? As long as it's you and yes. not the city is, I guess, what I was really looking <laughs> yes. for. So um, for the hotel. Yeah. Now, let me add you the one more component. Sure. Hopefully it ends there. We have Ensel Phelps as a division for property management. They oversee all the property Everything. managers. All of it together. To make sure that you know, it's run are... properly. Because remember, you don't want to have, and I'll give the example of the restaurant because we have a great uh, food and beverage operator, so I, he, he won't take offense to it. He's great at it. Uh, but if, if somebody is not defaulting, they're paying their rent, but they're not a quality restaurant, it hurts the destination. Mm. So that's part of, of what we monitor. It's mm. not only uh, are all the bills being paid, but is it the quality that it's supposed to be? And it's our job to keep us all the way at the, the cutting edge of where it should be. Well, if you're not there, you're not going to be getting the revenues in, which right. means that you're not going to be getting the bottom line right. that you're looking for, yeah. which means yeah. that you're not yeah. Yeah. And you're not going to be making your partner happy. Front, uh, without, you know, watching what's going on. Understood. So Hensel Phelps Services would oversee all the property management. Mm -hmm. We could, you know, um, then we have 
uh, the hotel, the workforce housing operator, and then you know some of the other public amenities between Morningstar or Hensel Phelps Direct as well. But we're the quarterback of all the property management. So I would assume that you have taken into consideration the increases that of the cost over time, oh, obviously, yes. to make sure that it isn't something that you would end up in a situation like we are now. Yes. Yeah. Um, yep. Okay. Completely. That's all, that's all built in. Go ahead. You have, you want to yep. Did you have anything to say, Beth? Oh no. I well. They, they want me to mention that. No, no, I'm done. Well, okay. feel like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead, whatever you want to mention. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, a perfect example is I, I still have the budgets that were proposed for the golf course 10 years ago mm -hmm. and after that, and they just go up and up and up every year to, you know, now it's yeah, we we model, much more expensive. We're responsible. If, yeah. if we say that's what it is, that's what it's going to be. Yes, ma'am. You want to say yes, something? Yes, I want to ask just added to that. Would there be some kind of consortium or between the city and and you, or is this something that? Well, actually, we would have kind it. of an operational relationship. So we would ask probably that we create a committee between the three property managers, Ansel Phelps, and a representative of the city, so that they we they meet periodically to discuss the whole project, make sure everything is going well. Uh, but yeah, that's a very uh, good point that we normally would suggest during the negotiation, but yes. You know, um, I had the great honor of sitting with you, Beth, and Roy Case many years ago when he was bringing um, his vision of what could be done with the golf course, unfortunately. Um, you know, he didn't get to see um, this point, and hopefully this is going to be a point at which something happens, because like you said, this has been going on for more than a decade, yes. longer than I've been here. And um, you know, each time there's somebody that's new that's come in, you've come to that person and asked them, can we do this? So for the public, unfortunately, who feels that this is not something that's been really um, out there, it, it kind of has been, and even in a public setting, but unfortunately, not everybody pays attention to things that are happening in the city. And that goes for all of our issues that happen in the city. A lot of times people find themselves feeling like we did something in the dead of night, but we aren't. We're very transparent. Transparent. So just want to make sure that I mention that. Um, the, um, okay, so I, I think that the question about the percentage of units and, and uh, being um, and how, what the range is for the mixed uh, income, um, uh, the affordable housing, has been answered. Um, what percentage of the course is this entire project going to take, or how many acres? Do we know that? We're 10 acres that are going to be leased, but you always own it. You own everything. Yeah, no, no, I understand. I understand. Yeah, um, okay, about 10 acres. Do you know how much land the current clubhouse and the entrance and the parking and all that are uh, encompassing uh, now? I think it's about four about acres. Four. I think it's about four. I'm just talking about the overall acre. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, about I think it's about four acres okay. at the clubhouse and parking lot and, and current driving range are on, okay. which obviously would then be used for the new Yeah, you're going to be moving things, yeah. shifting. So I, I just want yeah. to help my co constituency to understand this isn't a taking of 10 acres. This is a taking of a net potentially maybe six acres. Okay, yes. that's we're And relocated yeah. to Atlantic Ave. The, yeah. the cell phone tower is worth as well oh okay yeah right ahead cell phone towers will be moved yeah so that we can use that land which is just kind of wasted sure. land right currently now currently there's a cell the phone tower with a radius around it of it's not used for golf it's not used for right yeah. or any our, type our of inten use. our intention which is another what yeah. some acres like acres exactly yeah. so when you're talking about the net it's very important to help um, our constituency understand that this isn't necessarily a degreening of all of this space yes there's <laughs> going to be a percentage of it or a certain amount it looks like it may be as as much as four acres over there in the change up in order to be able to make this work and pay for itself. So and certainly correct. more efficient by moving everything correct. to the north. Correct. Correct. The net the net acreage would not be ten acres. It's much less than that. Right. Well, that's what I'm trying yeah. to get yeah. across because I, I know that that's a, a big issue, not just in our city but in many yeah. cities about how much green space is I under, being understand taken it. and built up on. I understand. So. And the and the and the right place for this is probably along Atlantic more so than in the middle of the golf course where it is currently because you are routing traffic through neighborhoods that will soften that for those that are living there and probably increase value, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, the schedule, the final thing, and I know we're 
well, we're, we're still okay. The scheduling of events, you have to understand that that clubhouse right now is entirely owned by the city and is completely um, programmed by the city. Um, we do use that for a lot of various things, and I just want to make sure that that relationship is there that because we don't have a lot of meeting spaces that accommodate um, you know, a large group, um, and especially in a setting that's different than this setting here. Um, so just want to understand the, um, that that will always be something that the city will have uh, as, you know, have access to, and also if there are weddings and those types of things, obviously that would be something that would be handled through the group, the management group. Um, but it has to continue because, again, that's a, a great setting for yep. a lot of the people who. And it are would really just be providing preference to the city for their right. for their scheduling. Right. And again, it's all about finding that optimum. You know, the more private events that are held, the more revenue share that's available to pay for the pieces. So it's right. you know we'd set a baseline and, and and the city would be entitled to those, and then we can we can talk about. But this is a true partnership with right. the city. So we will make some of the rooms available at specific times for community meetings and stuff like that. Fantastic, because currently there are community associations that do meet at the golf course they don't have a space right and um, and it's they, they I think they may charge them a, a very nominal fee but it's very small it's a small impact because these community community they're not they're not mandatory associations so they don't they're they're volunteer they don't have money and that's something that that yeah. does come there as well we plan on being here for the long haul with you mm -hmm. so obviously we're going to be participating in the community and even on, on some of the outside after the golf course course closes at night there might be you know some uh, walking uh, paths with you know lighting and stuff so there it's gonna be a lot of fun programming that we will develop together yeah and I think yeah gotcha um, our town council's always there Hosting the meetings in the in the top golf swing bay suites. So I just want you to who, who are you? Can you can you come up and okay, men sorry. mention your name and, and we need everybody at the mic. Sorry. So um, my name is George Schneider. I'm the restaurant operator for the group. Oh, okay. um, coming from 1776 with Top Golf uh, Swing Suites. Mm -hmm. And our Top Golf Swing Suites really has been a great addition to our restaurant, our community, because everyone's been using it from from the kids to the to the community centers to the meetings and business meetings. <laughs> And, and I and I saw community was it? I'm sorry. What community was that? In Marstown, New Jersey. Okay, Marstown. Thank you. The concept. Thanks. So, um, you know, I was just going to make a couple notes. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, George. Um, the just a couple of things I want to mention and to my colleagues, but I that I see. I, I love the idea that this is something that is we're going to get all the infrastructure done, not just two wells, but we're going to have all the wells. But mo more importantly, we we have kind of not had that relationship with the. Um, right across the street, our, our high school. And I love that idea of making sure that that is open and you know free-flowing, that we have some ability to be able to have discount um, prices for the students that are coming over to learn how to play golf and, and whatnot. And yeah, I think it's very, very important, even though the, go the students are not, I mean, I'm sorry, the school is not in, under our jurisdiction, they're our children yeah. <laughs> that are going there. So we want to make and sure that's that very we passionate that. about the mm -hmm. junior program. Yeah, I mean, I the program that Sandra and I did with Carver Middle School was very rewarding. Yeah. Um, and this will have endless opportunities to do programs like that um, because it's going to be a bigger space. Absolutely. Sounds great. Well, thank you guys so much. Is there any other questions before we anything from the city manager or the? I think Ms. Maxfield needs to um, make the commission aware of something. Okay, go right ahead. Come on up. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Great presentation. Good morning, Sarah Maxfield, once again, the Director of Economic Development. I just need to notate that the um, the layout of the golf course that they shared with you today was not what was in the original submission, so there's been a bit of a change. Um, so just to make sure um, that that's mentioned on the record and that we're in compliance with what's required through our procurement policies, I'm going to let Mr. Singer speak a little bit more about the change and whether or not it's substantive enough to to cause a, um, concern. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Richard Singer, National Golf Foundation, the, the city's golf consultant. 
Um, I, as Sarah mentioned, there is a, a change, a modest change to the uh, golf course design in the, that's uh, presented here today as compared to the proposal. But it is my opinion that it's not a material difference. Okay. Uh, I think they've added some detail into their layout, um, but it does not change the situs or the, or the uh, layout of, of the entire property in any way. Well, okay, and Sarah, if, I, if you may come back up. I know that there was one, and I'm not sure if it was one of the ones that was taken off, um, but there was one that didn't even have anything as far as what they were planning as far as the entire uh, structure on the front, not uh, the front, uh, what they were going to be doing. Um, is that still in here, or was that one of the ones that was removed? I believe that one was removed. Okay. All right. Very good. Because, you know, again, if you don't know what's going on, then it would be non, you know, non-responsive and... You know, if they can't go any further, well, that well, how would we make a decision on that? I, I know we're not making a decision today, but I'm just saying that you know there's going to be probably a little bit of changes here and there as long as it's not over the top or everything's changed. Um, so, so Mayor, just out of fairness, yeah. um, I would ask that the commission not consider what this is and whatever was in the proposals that yeah. were given to you. That's what needs to be considered. While we all agree that negotiations yes. negotiations can bring about differences. Every applicant was told Absolutely. that they could not make changes. So we don't want to give somebody an unfair advantage. So when you are going to make your final decision, I would recommend that you disregard what was given to you today and just simply consider what was in the proposals that were provided to you earlier. Good. Anything else? Well, I was just going to ask, but now that Lynn's clarified, their, um, the proposal that they made was the one that was endorsed by the Donald Ross Foundation. Yeah, it always was. There was just a, there was a change in, I think, the layout maybe a little bit? It's a slight tweak in the layout. Okay. Yeah. Very good. All right. Thank you. So I think we can move on to the next. Are you ready to move on to the next? Great. Um, the next. We need a break. We're good. All right. Let's move. All right. So um, we will queue up the next presentation. This is Bobby Jones Links Mill Creek. And um, same rules apply. They will have up to 30 minutes for the presentation and then commission at your pleasure, a discussion and questions and answers. Very good. Um, to the next team coming up, please um, make sure that whomever is answering questions or speaking is at the mic so that we get you on the recording and those who are watching from home are able to hear the entire exchange of what's happening. Oh. <laughs> Buckeye Nation is, is in the house. Yep, you're right. Oh, he must have had a crew with him. He had a crew with him. Yeah, that's interesting. That's so interesting. She judge you by your usage. You like the wooden one? Yeah, yeah, the wooden one stands up. Uh, Flashbacks of uh, industrial arts. I was going to say. <laughs> I don't even know. Do they still have industrial arts in school? I don't, I don't no. know. Yeah. High school drop in class. There you go. Oh, yeah. All right. I don't do industrial arts. Oh. 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 Yeah. Into March, March 31st. That's pretty cool. That's right in the middle. That's like a redo of yeah. what we have. All right. So how does this is the advanced button? Got it. Uh, I'm ready. All right, start when you want. All right. Uh, good morning, Mayor, Commissioners, uh, City staff, and residents of, Pont of uh, Delray Beach. Uh, we truly appreciate the opportunity uh, to be here today and present our response to the city's RFP requesting solutions uh, for the, uh, to address the condition of the Delray Beach Golf Club. Uh, we, be we believe we have the best, simplest, most financially viable and flexible proposal for the city of Delray Beach, which will yield the best golf experience for Delray residents and visitors. 
Uh, we've been working on this proposal for well over a year and a half, so we're very excited to finally be here today. Uh, we have assembled a hands-on all-star team, not just famous names, that will be directly involved in the project and ensure that we can execute the vision that we are going to present to you today. Uh, let me quickly introduce our team. Uh, I am, my name is John Grimaldi. I, work for, I am the Vice President of Development for Mill Creek Residential Trust. Um, Mill Creek is the third largest multifamily uh, builder and developer in the country. Uh, we are a one-stop shop for all aspects of multifamily and mixed-use development. We acquire, we develop, we build our own projects, and we manage those projects once they are completed. Uh, we are active in 30 markets and have 21 offices throughout the country. Uh, our corporate headquarters is located in Boca Raton, right down the road. I work out of that office. I will be involved in the day-to-day -day operations of this project uh, for Mill Creek. Our core management team spun off from Tramwell Crow in 2011, and since then we have built over 47,000 homes uh, for a total capitalized value of almost $14 billion. Uh, this slide also represents all the different equity partners and lenders that we work with and have developed relationships with. We are very strong financially and definitely have the horsepower to get this project done. Uh, Delray is an easy sell, frankly. Uh, we also, I'm also very uh, pleased and excited to have Mr. Reese Jones here today from Reese Jones Design along with Steve Weiser who is the uh, Reese's head and lead architect. Uh, Reese is one of the world's most famous uh, golf course architects with 250 designs worldwide. Uh, his clubs include PGA Tour, Ryder Cup, and ma major championship venues. Two of his municipal golf courses, Torrey Pines in San Diego and Beth Page Black in New York have hosted US Opens. Um, Reese is a resident of Palm Beach County and will be directly involved in the rebirth of this golf, club, golf course. Uh, shortly, Reese will come up and share his vision of what the city and the residents can expect from the golf course renovation. And probably a lot more exciting than what I'm talking about. Um, I also have with me today uh, Whitney Krause, uh, the founding member of uh, Bobby Jones Lynx. Uh, his firm will be directly responsible for managing, maintaining, and continuing to improve the golf course after its completion. Bobby Jones Lynx has over $350 million dollars of golf course construction experience and has developed and managed more than 100 golf courses in the past 20 years. Uh, their most recent renovation is a very interesting comparison. It is a $32 million renovation and rebirth of the historic Bobby Jones Municipal Golf Course in Atlanta. It's something uh, Whitney re recently finished up and is very, very similar to what we're proposing to do today. Uh, as an aside, on a personal note for Whitney, he actually used to uh, travel down to Delray to visit his grandfather and actually learned how to play golf on this golf course. So it is a very personal endeavor for him. Oh, thank you. Bobby Jones links. Uh, quickly, on the rest of the team, I do have here today Victor Hugh with Dorsky Hugh Architects, who will be the multifamily architect. Uh, they are a nationally recognized firm with an office in Fort Lauderdale um, and can answer any questions on the multifamily building and its design. Uh, I currently have two projects under construction with Dorsky Hugh, with the third scheduled to break ground this summer. We have two more in the pipeline, so we are very active with Dorsky and have a lot of experience with him. I also have uh, David Fradley from Willingham and Fradley. Uh, they're a, a local civil engineering company that we have used as well. They're based in Oakland Park. Uh, they have been around since 1979 and have completed work throughout South Florida, including Del Rey, and have also lots of golf course uh, experience as well. Uh, and finally, Carol Perez, she could not be here. She just got back from uh, vacation. She's the principal and president of AGD, AGT Land, who will be the landscape architect for both the multifamily and the golf course uh, component. Um, AGT Land is a designated woman, a woman business enterprise and is a local consulting firm. Uh, two uh, recommended criteria that were included in the RFP that, that we have met. Um, I hope, uh, 
I asked if I could uh, say this. She actually was involved with the initial construction of the clubhouse at the golf course. Mm -hmm. She actually pulled the plans from her archives and gave it to us for review. So it was, uh, it was very helpful, and it would be a, a good uh, circling back around for her to, to, uh, to renovate the course and the clubhouse. On to the, uh, to the business proposal itself. Um, as I mentioned at the start, uh, we believe we have the best, simplest, most financially viable and flexible proposal for the city of Delray Beach, which will yield the best golf experience for Delray residents and visitors. Our proposal is, in exchange for just 7% of the total golf course land, or approximately 10 acres, we will, play, we will pay the city $40 million. $40 million. Of this amount, $24 million will be allocated to the renovation of the golf course and clubhouse. This is what we will fund and what the taxpayers will not have to fund, nor the city. In addition, once the course opens, Bobby Jones Links will enter into a 30-year lease agreement that we project will generate an additional $10 million over those 30 years to the city. So on the 10-acre parcel, Mill Creek proposes to build a two-phase multifamily project. Uh, between both phases, we will have 650 units. Of these, 20% or 130 apartment homes will be added to the Palm Beach County Workforce Housing Program. Modera Delray Beach is going to be a high-end luxury product. That is what Mill Creek builds. These workforce housing units will be built to the same level of quality as the rest of the apartments. It will be integrated into the, into the project. They're not segregated. I just want to make sure, I'm not sure if everybody, especially in the public, understands. These will be in, in the building, integrated, 130 workforce housing units that I believe the community desperately needs. In addition, I'd like to point out that the overall footprint of the buildings involved is actually less than six acres. Uh, the balance is left for uh, buffers between us and the golf course and green space. In particular, uh, we've included in the first phase a 10,000 square foot restaurant retail space. Uh, that restaurant retail space will actually be located on the south side of the project. It will open up onto the golf course so that, so that it will include a covered uh, seating area and outdoor gathering space. Um, as we like to say, not everybody, not everybody plays golf, but everybody eats. And everybody can come from the community uh, and, and appreciate the green space and the, and the renovated landscaping of the golf course <clears throat> at any time. Again, um, of, the, of the $40 million purchase price, $24 million will be used to deliver to Delray Beach a completely new championship golf course and an enhanced clubhouse, making it one of the premier public courses in the state of Florida and one that is also affordable for Delray residents yet charges market rate for non-residents and, and tourists. And I'm very pleased to bring up uh, Stephen Reese now to give you uh, more information on the golf course itself. Um, I really appreciate being here. Um, I grew up really a lot in Broward County. My dad built Coral Roots Country Club and uh, <clears throat> it was he le leased the land for 10 years and then was able to buy it. So it was his dream is Florida dream and um, I'm a true Floridian. Uh, I live in um, Juno Beach now um, and I've been doing a lot of work in uh, this region. We just did the Broken Sound golf course over, just opened it um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, they have the Timber Tech uh, championship on the next to last tournament on the Champions Tour. We just did Coral Ridge over. Uh, we did bo both the Breakers golf courses. Uh, we did the Preserve and Iron Horse and now we're doing Addison Reserve starting in May. So we're here and we're very busy in, in this area. In fact, I like it because it's close to home. Um, you know, I grew up on a Donald Ross golf course. I grew up in Montclair Golf Club, uh, par 70. Uh, we had the U.S. Amateur there in 1985. Um, and um, I, I really understand the Donald Ross philosophy. And our plan, I think, is the only plan that actually keeps every one of the Donald Ross holes. Our whole back nine is the original layout. Uh, and then the front nine, uh, we changed, uh, but we're gonna bring it back into Donald Ross style. <clears throat> now, Donald Ross is, is a very popular designer. He's probably the most famous uh, designer. My father, uh, the American Society of Golf Course Architects, recognizes him 
as the uh, really father of, of American golf. My father, Robert Trent Jones, got the first Donald Ross Award, and I received the Donald Ross Award in 2013. Um, I've also had the good fortune of um, redesigning a lot of Donald Ross golf courses and restoring them, like East Lake, where they play the Tour Championship, and we really resurrected that whole east side of Atlanta. Um, and Piners Number no. Two, which has had uh, several U.S. Opens, and we'll have five more. Um, we restored that back in 19 for the 1999 uh, U.S. Open, and. Um, the reason I think Donald Ross is important to restore is that he is probably the most famous designer in America, but at the same token, he built golf courses that everybody loves. And uh, his greens are pitched toward the fairway, which makes it easier to hold the shot. Um, and uh, he, he bunkers his golf courses uh, for strategy, not just for visual effect. Um, everything Donald Ross did was for a reason, and I think that's why it's important to completely restore your back nine and then uh, redesign the front nine in Donald Ross style. Um, <clears throat> I think another factor that, uh, that um, we, we reduced the, the uh, par to 70, but Donald Ross also had a lot of par 70 golf courses. My course, Montclair, was a par 70. Uh, whenever we convert a golf course uh, to get ready for a championship, we usually take out the par fives because they're so easy for the um, the long hitter that we make it a par 70. So I think from a Don Ross standpoint, uh, this being a par 70 is very appropriate. Our course is 6,700 yards, where, uh, which is really more like 7,000, 7,100 yards, it was a par 72. So it is of championship length. Um, what we're, we really intend to do is really make this, we, we, I've been over the site, I mean, something has to be done to improve this golf course. Um, we're we're going to rebuild all the greens to Donald Ross style, the bunkers to Donald Ross style. We have 81 bunkers in our plan, but they're not going to be the massive post-World War II bunkers. They're going to be really smaller, much like Donald Ross designed, and they won't be over, overly penal. They'll be pitched uphill. Uh, this is what we've been doing in all our golf courses now to make it so it's easier to hit out of them and get on the green. Uh, they're going to be easy to get walk in and out of. Uh, and I think the fairway bunkers are really going to be able to hit long shots out of, which is the style of strategic American golf. Um, our, uh, our, I think this is just going to become a very, very popular uh, destination for all golfers. Uh, it's perfectly located, and uh, I think taking away the land really doesn't detract anything because we've basically kept the, the Donald Ross 9 the same. We've kept all the holes along the boundary uh, in the same place. The eighth hole is now shortened, uh, but all the boundary holes are right on the same, as is the practice fairway, in the same place it exists today. So this is a true restoration, and um, I started restoration <clears throat> back in 1985 when we restored uh, the country club at Brookline where they played last year's U.S. Open, and um, everybody says they're going to restore golf courses, but I mean, that's a, a great sales point, but in this case, we are going to restore it and even make the, the front nine uh, Donald Ross, so it's more than restoration. Uh, but I think Steve Weiser might want to add a few things. <clears throat> I don't know if I can do it from the... Uh, you can probably see from the map that, uh, as Reese mentioned, we took the assumption of preserving the back nine, the Ross nine, we have the original R Ross plans of what he laid out there, and our proposal for those holes is to restore the green shapes, green locations, uh, bunker locations. So it's the same, same nine holes that he designed. Uh, and that also takes into account, as Reese mentioned, preserving the, the space and the holes that run along the property boundary, particularly there on the west side. It's the same on the east side. And so uh, we feel that this is as close as you can get to the original Ross golf course along with incorporating the new into that. And so we feel it's preservation, restoration, and then everything being a new version of that. Uh, as Reese said, new greens, all new turf grass, the, the modern way of building bunkers, new cart paths, and 
they are still able to play out of the original clubhouse location, original amount of parking, original clubhouse area, and that lets uh, the the golfers use an, a large space, have a, their own Delray Beach facility, and uh, it's a new golf course, but it's original, um, and that's my description. Oh, and, and uh, the other thing that I didn't mention that, that was something that came up in the previous questions, uh, we, we still do have relocated to some extent the irrigation lakes, but these would still be new, brand new um, lined irrigation lakes. We preserved all the original uh, well locations. We're proposing to put in all new well lines, and the wells can be replaced in their original location. Well, good morning. My name is Whitney Krause. I'm the CEO of Bobby Jones Links, and I couldn't be more excited for you. Uh, I recently did this in Atlanta. Our team, a $32 million rebirth of the historic Bobby Jones golf course there. <clears throat> the parallels are amazing. It's had a huge impact on the community. Uh, today we're there, we have 3,000 junior golfers, um, all kinds of uh, programs. Uh, so. We are fresh from this from this experience. So let me just tell you, I'm going to tell you quickly, you can see in the screens in front of you, but I want to reiterate, this could be a brand new golf course. This In our budget, and when we envisioned this, uh, this is the time on when the taxpayers don't have to pay for it to make these great improvements. And so reasons, Steve, I've already mentioned some of these things, but I'm going to just um, whip through these real quickly just to remind you, and, and I want to talk about a little bit about the clubhouse too. Um, you know, we're going to have two new irrigation lakes that are lined. Uh, we've allotted $2 million to fix the water line. We've allocated $750,000 to improve the landscaping on the golf course and surrounds and to put it in um, landscaping in native to South Florida and get rid of some of the uh, the older plants. Uh, the new course will have all new signage, tee and yardage markers, ball washers, water coolers, and benches. It will have a completely renovated and expanded maintenance center uh, that is safe and compliant. So it'll have all the storage, new equipment. Uh, it'll be absolutely what you'll need for the club. Let me see here. Um, I skipped a slide there, so I'll go back a little bit, but that's okay. Um, let's go on up to John, excuse me. Um, yeah, first slide, sorry. Of course, we're going to have a Reese Jones golf course. That's going to draw players. It's going to re result in an amazing golf course. Um, we're going to have 18 new Tiff Eagle greens. This is the hybrid grass. It's the best for golf grass for greens built to USGA specifications. As Reese mentioned, we'll have 81 new sand bunkers. We'll have a state-of-the-art irrigation system. Uh, all new tees, fairways, and roughs with celebration Bermuda grass. So we're gonna scrape the whole thing. This is a brand new golf course. Uh, and, and most importantly, one of the things it doesn't have now, we'll have continuous concrete car paths. So it'll, it'll run from the clubhouse all the way around. Uh, and that'll make a huge difference in the wear and tear to the golf course and the experience for the golfer. Um, I think uh, we mentioned that one. John, if you go to the clubhouse, uh, let me just speak to the clubhouse a little bit. We have a rendering here in front of you. I'm sorry the public can't see it, but the, um, we felt strongly that the current clubhouse is just fine. It's large. It's attractive. It just needs some cosmetic repair and improvements. Uh, it'll hold the largest amount of groups of all the proposals. You can see it, as you know, over 250 people in this. So it'll be an ideal spot for weddings, civic meetings, banquets, outings, uh, whatever. We're going to replace all the tables and chairs, give it new decor, uh, add new kitchen equipment if we need it, build a new pro shop. Uh, with all new fixtures, as you can see in this picture. Uh, it, it'll have a re-theme and redecorated grill. 
So uh, equally important, we have 235 spaces in the parking lot to accommodate both the golf and the non-golf activities going on at the club. And that's actually kind of large for a club, but uh, when I first learned to play golf here, um, and I've had a wonderful career in the PGA for 40 years, uh, thanks to my grandfather, it was started here, um, it was 27 holes. Many of you may not know that, but it was a 27-hole property. And that's why the parking lot's so large. Well, that works to our advantage because we're going to repave that. So we're going to have a newly landscaped, newly decorated, repainted clubhouse with an expanded deck on the back and patio for people to enjoy the view. Uh, and we won't have to put this out on Atlantic Avenue. And that's, uh, as an operator of a club, it's huge because if you put the 235 or more spaces you need for clubhouse, or anything else at Atlantic Avenue, you're gonna have a compaction problem and a traffic problem. So while ideally some residents may feel that they would, would prefer the road in not to be used, it really is ideal for you. And Atlantic Avenue and the traffic impact to the city. I can't stress that enough. Stress that enough. And to build a new, which almost 20,000 square foot clubhouse today, um, you know, it's kind of it's gone crazy as we know, but it'd probably be seven or $800 a square foot. So it's there, and it's wonderful. And there's a rendering for you of, and that's um, basically some of the improvements I wanted to make sure you understood. This is our turnkey, outstanding. Oh, one more slide, I'm sorry, I am really out of order of slides. My slide, no, my, my, my slide man back there is a little, <laughs> we, we can go to the range and, and then we'll be finished. <clears throat> This is really important, and I know all the other presenters are doing this, and, the, and it's exactly what they should be doing. Uh, last year, uh, we just did, got the data from the industry, we had 25.6 million golfers in the United States. For the first time ever, we had 28 million participants off the golf course. Top golf, driving ranges, simulators. That reflects the younger generations, the way they entertain, the way families recreate. So in our facility here, we will build a covered structure, something like this, with all the latest technology for gaming, ball tracking. You're gonna hear about this from the other bidders. Uh, it's, in addition, with a new practice green, a new putting green, it'll be the state-of-the-art practice center. Uh, and um, I hope you select us, but I, if, if anything else, I can tell you this is a very important component of modernizing a golf course today. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Do one more slide. Okay. We did practice, I promise. <laughs> um, this is really important uh, to us as a group. Bobby Jones is a company, but I'm sure to you. The, um, when you have a municipal course like this, uh, you have the opportunity <laughs> to have a larger impact on growing the game and in the community than any other type of course. Uh, at all our courses we do this. We, I'll use Bobby Jones Golf Course in Atlanta as an example, where we have 3,000 kids in the program. We are the home to black girls golf. We have um, disabled golf golfers tournaments and access to the course. We are associated with the first tee. Actually, we run a course in Atlanta as home to the first tee. We'll have the PGA Junior League so my message to you is there will be a lot of activity to grow the game and make this a center of activity uh, for people that want to get introduced to the game of all types, just not white golfers, everybody, disabled, women, juniors. This is where the industry has to go to grow beyond 25 million golfers. And that's our plan for golf course. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll move to the commission. We'll start on this oh. end if the vice mayor is ready. I'm sorry, I had a couple more. Oh, I apologize. I, I wanted to, wanted to you conclude. Have, you, have, you got more minutes. You okay. Five more minutes on I have a, just a, it won't even take that long. Okay. Um, I just want to make a couple other uh, additional points in closing based on uh, some of the more, more, more recent meetings. Um, that, have, that have occurred uh, since we presented. Uh, first, as requested in the RFP, we did commission a traffic study. Uh, we got a traffic study from John Donaldson, um, who is obviously very familiar with Delray Beach. It was included in our submittal. Um, this is his technical response. Uh, the study indicated 
that our project will maintain an adequate level of service based on what we are adding with the additional units to Atlantic. Um, I know there's a lot of concern about traffic and it's something we'll need to continue to study uh, if we were so lucky to be able to move forward with you. Um, but we do take that very seriously and we did try to comply with the, uh, with the RFP. I do want to point that out. Uh, the second thing, and, and Steve did uh, kind of touch on this, our plan is to scale. What you're seeing on this plan is real. Um, the phase one building is only 3.4 acres. The, the phase two building is 2.2 acres. Um, the linear footprint along Atlantic is 40% is smaller than the closest other bidder and allows for about 500 linear feet of, of golf course frontage. So people know the golf course is there and see it in passing. Um, along the rest of the Atlantic will just be two, you know, what I, what I believe will be beautiful structures. Um, third, well, actually, uh, uh, Steve did touch on this. Again, the advantage of renovating the clubhouse and keeping it where it is is that we can provide a lot of parking, 235 parking spaces, without having to worry about fitting those additional parking spaces with the other use on Atlantic. It will be very congested trying to fit the clubhouse on Atlantic along with the necessary parking for, for what the type of events that I know the city wants to continue to hold. And we will, obviously, the clubhouse will be yours to, to, to use for scheduling events. We understand that you have over 80 weddings a year. You have civic events. You have breakfasts. That is what the clubhouse will be for, is there for, and will continue to be for when we're done with this plan. It'll just be in a lot better shape. Um, finally, our, in our first phase, we have money, $2 million set aside for, remo for replacing the, uh, the, the uh, raw water lines so that any future work that has to happen with the wells, our second phase has plenty of money in that to, to, to address the wells and it, will not, uh, it, and it will not affect our ability to continue to operate the golf course. We can always do that at a later date. Um, I did have a closing comment, but I am out of time, so I guess um, we can open, up, open it up for questions. Okay, very good. And I apologize, John, for uh, stepping in. No, I didn't not a problem I at all. Finished. I, I, my apologies. Thank you very much, uh, Reese and uh, um, Whitney, I believe it was. And is it Steve? Was it? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. I just want to make sure I mentioned everybody. We appreciate your um, uh, great presentation. So let me go now to the vice mayor. Thank you. And, and it was an amazing presentation. Um, I've always wanted to play at Torrey Pines. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day, but I, I mean. Make a call. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> you got the right guy in the room. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Well, you'll still have to pay. <laughs> uh, um, it, it just, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, the, just a couple questions I had. I know it was very big to restore the Donald Ross um, in your uh, backup. It says completely renovated Delray Beach Golf Course. I think it was said a couple of times, completely new golf course. I know it's very important for our residents that play there on a regular basis that the golf course kind of, the, the Donna Ross aspect particularly, remains intact. So how do you balance completely new versus keeping Donald Ross? I think it was all nine holes in your It was just plan? nine holes with Donald Ross, yes. Um, let me answer part of that when I because I use the term come to the microphone. Yeah. I use the term completely new sure. when I was referring to new cart paths, new bunkers, new infrastructure. I wasn't re uh, specifically relating to the design or new holes. And I'll let Reese finish that. It's just the part. new infrastructure yes. that supports okay. the current golf course. Fixing everything. Mm -hmm. um, as I sort of alluded to, a restoration is a term that's used a lot, um, and um, uh, in this case, we have a model that's worth restoring. And, uh, but at the same token, we're going to try to probably get a little more length. Uh, the bunkers will be the same style, but uh, they may, the fairway bunkers might be a little farther out because the ball is going farther. Um, but in, in essence, it's going to be a restoration because we do have the plans and uh, we like the style. And, we, and the style is very popular uh, for the everyday player as well as the best players in the game. And uh, the, the greens will be built like Donna Ross, not a crown green like Pioneer's number two, more of a green that's pitched from back to front, which is his predominant green style. So uh, we we are. It's gonna. You might. It might even be a Donna Reese course, but when, when you're done. So um, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not a joke. That's impressive. <laughs> but uh, 
it, it, but it is going it's going to be recognizable a lot of the holes are in the same location so the people that love this golf course and they're really worried about it being changed too much they can really we can allay those fears right thank you uh my other question was about uh moderna uh the apartments uh, I, i'm looking at page 11 of your slide and i know uh 375 resident homes uh, and then in phase one, phase two, 275. That looks like a tall building. Uh, What's that, the height? <laughs> that is actually not uh, the the building. The, we have another rendering. It's a five-story building. Five stories? Yeah, this is a building actually that Victor uh, and I are building in Davie right now. What I bring it on there because it's a very similar style to I know what the city likes. It's kind of a Mediterranean revival. It, it's modern but also has some classical touches. And I th And we think that we just we're doing this right now so it's it's a very similar building to what we would like architecturally like but we do it is the 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 plan that you see right here with the configuration and the footprint is based on a five-story building not a not an eight-story building okay. i appreciate the clarification no problem good I question yield to my nice colleague all right over. welcome to commissioner johnson thank you so much i feel honored to be in the same room with such illustrious historical I don't want to make you feel old or anything but <laughs> you have a connection with the city I think there were a couple of you that did um, that's wonderful I love the history of this city and to say that there used to be a 27 whole course I did not know that I don't it know was. if my I did okay she's a golfer I am not you almost make me want to become one uh, if I could drive the golf course a golf cart rather on the concrete so not to you know get around the whole thing without uh, having to walk it because senior citizens like to pretend we're doing things but we need that golf cart so <laughs> and the and the course I don't have any really um, in-depth questions I beautiful presentation I love that um, I think uh, this is more geared towards the golf course and that's something that the residents were I think a little upset about the thought that um, we weren't considering that we're just going to take it so it's interesting how you've done it I love your presentation and I just wanted to know who else was with you who didn't get to come to the mic maybe we've got some more history there my name is David Fradley I am one of the partners with Willingham and Fradley we've been here over 40 years and my partner and I worked six years before that together and we're the civil engineer, so civil engineer. you don't normally see us or the stuff we put into the ground after it gets buried. <laughs> yeah. And it would be your um, responsibility to do the infrastructure? Is yes, that infrastructure, like the wells, and if they had to be moved, um, we would do that. And, and the, the drainage, water and sewer is pretty um, uh, minor because it's all mm -hmm. on Atlantic once you get back there. So, um, yeah, our, pretty much what we design gets buried. but. Um, that would that would be our, our that's the most important part people don't really realize that I've yeah. served um, I don't know how many years five perhaps of maybe six of um, my term here talking about the uh, wastewater mm -hmm. and I had a tour of the golf course and didn't realize what was on it as far as the water and that's vital and I don't think enough of our citizens realize it's an open space but we have a lot of water connections etc so I, that's an exciting part of it to me because it needs help right. and so there's a gentleman behind you thank you good morning uh, my name is Victor U of Dorsky U International um, my late partner started the firm actually in 1959 in Cleveland and he opened an office down here in 1970 and we have been here ever since we have been involved in uh, I personally myself have been involved in um, the golf course community in other parts of the world from a dreamland in Azerbaijan mm. uh, some people went where where the heck is it what are you doing in Azerbaijan in Baku uh, to um, uh, Manila and so forth so we are honored to be part of this team thank you we have we have a lot in the room I really honored and thank you all very much Good. okay Commissioner Boylston yeah so uh, first even just by reading through your proposal but definitely after your presentation you have a true love for not only golf but for our golf course mm. and uh, and that was very clear maybe out of all the proposals um, which is a great thing but then there's also some you know concerning aspects um, just in you know you love our golf club uh, in your proposal it says power washing and touch-up painting maybe even a full painting 
Um, we think it needs more than that. Okay. <laughs> what are we speaking about? In the proposal for our clubhouse, they were oh, clubhouse, yes, okay. power washing it, touch mm -hmm. up painting, mm -hmm. maybe even <coughs> fully painting it. Mm -hmm. And I think we're looking for more than that, obviously. Sure. Um, you go into a little bit more detail and how you'll renovate, how you renovate the, the the inside. Obviously, it's sticking in the same location. Um, and then and then the golf course itself, um, I think it checks some positive boxes um, for the fact that you are probably the only one that's keeping the Donald Ross nine. Uh, but what I'm looking at is the amount it looks like you're providing to the city, yet you're still asking for the 10 acres. Yet you're still developing two five-story buildings. Yet you're still bringing in 8,000 square feet of retail on the first floor, potentially even more in the second project. Um, can, you, can you explain that a, a little bit to me where it really seems like you're providing the least, yet still asking um, a lot from us? Well, I don't know where to start that. Um, I can address the clubhouse first, and I'll let John talk about the, the, the development part. Um, we've built a lot of clubhouses, and um, during the RFP process, it was rather quick, and because of the cone of silence in the short time period, we didn't have time to really go in and ask structural questions and do a due diligence you normally do. But we did go through and visit it several times and see it and see the cosmetic improvements it needs. Um, and our goal is to make this really attractive and expand. So if we're short on those monies, that's what the contingency is for. And frankly, of this $24 million, some things always move around by the time we get to the final agreement or product based on your needs and priorities. But I can assure you the clubhouse will be repainted, re-landscaped, new furniture, new clubhouse. It'll look terrific. Hopefully not concerned with you being short on, on funds. I, I was actually hoping to hear that maybe your take was a little bit more maybe realistic, maybe that you put more time into the fact that, hey, this is what it's going to cost, and this yes. is how much you're going to, I mean, you're, in some ways yours maybe looks more realistic or maybe financially structured, but I mean, that's really the answer I was hoping for. Sure. Because um, again, it feels like we're getting the least, and yet you're still taking and wanting oh. to build a lot. Let me, uh, yep, you take the rest of that. So th this is uh, something that we discussed internally, and, and as I, uh, I did mention, we did, wor we did work on this uh, idea uh, even before the RFP was issued, as you know. Um, you know, when we first started looking at this, everybody says, well, we need $10 million to renovate the golf course. Uh, and maybe some 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 uh, monies to use for the raw for the for the raw water system, um, and then when when Whitney gave me his proposal saying he needs 24 million, I was like, well, that's more than I thought. But in order to do this properly, I think you do need to spend that that kind of money to turn this into the type of course that can be sustainable that can that people are going to want to play on and. In order for us to keep resident rates low and, and be able to charge visitors from out of town or out of state higher, higher uh, costs per round, we have to make this truly spectacular. So if you look at, 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 our, at our breakdown, we have $11.2 million for the course. That sounds okay. That, that's in the range, right? But we have $1.4 million for landscaping and the, and, the, and the repair of the irrigation lakes. We have $1 million for growing. We have $1.32 million allocated to the uh, clubhouse renovation. We have $1 million allocated to the, to the renovation of the maintenance facility. I don't know if people have been looking at that. It needs serious upgrades. Um, the new driving range with the technology and the netting is $2 million. Um, then we have our, obviously our pre-opening expense, our soft costs, the CBRE fee, uh, a contingency, uh, design services, and that's what gets us to this $24 million. So I think we are, this is real. And so I crafted the phase, the first phase to be able to cover the, co the cost of renovating the golf course and replacing the raw water line so that any future utility improvements were not gonna disturb the course. 
and then we created and and it is stated in the in our response that uh, that uh, the second phase is really an option. Right. It's really up to what we all want to do. We are here to, to to work with you and negotiate with you. That second phase generates additional income that can be used to repair the wells or or renovate the wells or or replace the pumps or whatever it is that that are you know our engineers and and the and city engineering decides to do or monies for other other things. So. I really, uh, if if somebody, if other, if, if it looks like other people are generating more for less, I would question that their overall budget on the golf course. If you really want to make this into something that's going to generate income going forward and be, and not because we want to make money off the golf courses, because we want to make sure that you're not back in the same position sure. in a few years. We want to make this sustainable. Great. Lastly, I'll just note I appreciate the time that you put into not only addressing the maintenance facilities, which is in, you went into great detail, um, but the programs um, to get um, golfers, beginning golfers, non-golfers into the building, um, and also that you touched on customer service and training mm -hmm. and marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was very interesting. You went into detail in all of those things, and I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, just a few extra questions, because sure. I think my colleagues always seem to hit a lot of the ones that I have. Um, the range of, of, uh, of the workforce housing, are you also doing um, the, is it, do you know where it will fall in the range of 60 to 120 or 140 percent? Yeah, I, it is in line with the city's standards. We do not, it stops at 120 percent. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't remember if it starts at 80. I think it does. Okay, I think so it's 80 to 100 to 120 percent. Okay. And we don't really know what percentage of those 130 workforce units would be. Is it going to be equally dispersed or? Absolutely. I, I underwrote it 100 percent balanced uh, between. I, I broke it down by unit size, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, and I, I took the same percentage of each category okay. and spread it about equally. Got it. And. Who would it once this is completed? Who runs it? Who is it the same? Are we, is the city going to be taking it over and kind of running it like we're doing now? And or how is that? How is it? What is that? What what is the feel of that structure beyond when you're finished? The, the golf course, the golf course and the clubhouse, uh, the things that are obviously the city assets yeah, uh, are behind. Yeah, I'll speak to that. Sure, sure, sure. Well, Bob, our proposal, um, we propose a 30-year lease with the mm -hmm. city. Uh, Bobby Jones Links would do that uh, and pay the city uh, almost over $10 million in, in lease payment fees over the 30-year term. Uh, our firm, this Bobby Jones Links, uh, we, we have, uh, oh gosh, today 34 clubs in 12 states, over 2,500 employees. Uh, we have expertise in every area. Mm -hmm. uh, and we work for municipalities and we work for high-end private clubs like East Point and Palm Beach so uh, we bring all the expertise the procurement savings the, uh, the experience to run turnkey this club we've learned to make money in food and beverage we do millions of dollars in food and beverage and banquets each year so in addition to the development side uh, our real focus uh, as well as operating clubs Turn, a turnkey for developers, municipalities, boards. So we will. Okay, and, and so the main t the maintaining it as well, you would be doing during that least period, correct? Yes, okay. and we would submit, uh, um, you know, obviously a budget to the city, uh, and we, we pay pay to the city, you know, five or six percent of revenues mm -hmm. a year. But most importantly, we've put three or four percent of gross revenues a year, as set aside as capital reserve because. Um, there's 14,000 golf courses in the United States. Uh, interestingly, when people think the industry is shrinking, uh, the, the useless fact I throw out is there's more golf courses than McDonald's. <laughs> so it's still a big industry. And of those 14,000, 2,700 municipal courses, and half are struggling because they had great intentions, the city fathers and mothers and founders, to make golf affordable, but what happened is it, uh, the deferred maintenance, and finally you suddenly you, you find yourself in a position like this. Yes. So we have a cap reserve we're suggesting that we put in our agreement with you that requires us to reinvest in the course every year to give you comfort that this isn't going to happen again. Right. 
That's really important to, I think, everybody here because yes. of exactly what you just explained. Um, the uh, clubhouse, it looks like from this that there is an addition to it, or is that just that there is an expansion out from the current? I can't really figure that out because it looks like yeah. the back part of it, the, the very front where you have those uh, outdoor seating, mm. That little section there looks new to me, but I could be that. That is new. Okay. So there is going to be some expansion onto the golf course. Yes. A, a, cl a golf club. Yes. Okay. And again, this was the one area of due, dil due diligence we could do the least just because we couldn't really get in there and kick the tires. Um, the, the, the cart barn, which is to the left of the clubhouse, which mm -hmm. you don't see on this, we're going to keep it there, but we're going to improve the looks of it. Got it paint it, put some facade on it so it fits with the clubhouse. Okay. And um, let's see here. The entire amount that you're asking for in the front, I believe, was what you said, six acres. Is that correct? Pro roughly, it was 2.5 and 3. Point well, the parcel itself is about 10 acres, but that includes all the buffer between us and the golf course and, and the canal and, and, the, and, the, and the street. So the buildings themselves take up six acres roughly. Okay. So it's six acres of building, 10 acres total. Correct. And, and again, uh, well, I, I've already said this, the, uh, we, we prefer not to do retail, but I know that it was important to make the golf course enjoyable by everybody not just the golfers so um, so that is why we have this this retail space facing the golf course so everybody can come and it's going to be beautiful mm -hmm. you know a renovated golf course is beautiful period or whoever right so uh, you know we just wanted to, to create that atmosphere okay and then finally why a Florida rate along with a Delray rate. Ah. I noticed that there was a Florida yeah. rate and then there was everybody else gets to pay the high prices. So why are we doing a Florida rate? Well, well we may not have are to. You guys not from Delray and you all want to come down here and play for those <laughs> good fees? No, I'm just teasing. No, no, well, I, I, there must be a reason that you said that. I just was curious. Well, whether it's a Florida rate or a Delray rate, the, the spirit of it is if, if John is doing an affordable housing component, mm -hmm. And we feel it's very important, no matter what we spend here, to have an affordable golf component. Sure. And um, so whether that's defined just by Delray residents and their ID, uh, another layer for Florida residents, we don't know. We don't know what your wishes are. Mm -hmm. But we do know that there's a lot of people that are very rate sensitive, would love to see this happen, but are concerned that they can't afford it. We went through this in Atlanta. We, and once they saw what happened, they went from opposing it to the biggest zealots of that property in particular. But I'll just tell you, in our proposal, which may be misleading, we have a peak rate of $150. Mm -hmm. That's just the peak rate, prime time. All the companies now, including us, use dynamic pricing. Mm -hmm. And so it depends on the day of the week, the time of year. And there's an algorithm to it that we somewhat control. But in our model that we presented to you, even though we have a peak rate of 150, say, on a Saturday in March, because all the tourists are here, everything flows down from that. <clears throat> in the financial model we submitted to the city, which we gave the whole worksheet uh, and all the formulas that you can see um, in compliance with the RFP, I wrote down this morning, after you factor in the different times of year and discounts during the day, week, weekend, the average senior pays $40. The average resident pays $51 in our model. The average non-resident, $73. Overall, it's only $57. Mm -hmm. So don't anchor on the $150. Sure. But there's a market for that. That helps keep the club sustainable and financially viable for the people that'll pay that in prime time in the season. Of course, we, but, we have smart parking meters that we're supposed to be doing that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we will work out something with the city so that the residents feel comfortable yeah. day and have affordable golf. Very good. That's important to us as well. So thank you all very very much. Is there any other questions that we have? No. So appreciate it. Great presentation. I, I have to tell you, I think that this is the closest for what we have currently, and I think that that's really important to uh, consider for, for the consideration of, of uh, my colleagues and myself.
I really appreciate it. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for all your questions as well. Thank you for the history. I'll take a minute, Mary. Can we take a um, five minutes or whatever? Let's see, what time is it? Yeah, let's be back at 10 after. Is that okay? All right, very good. That way we can get to the restroom. We could, I guess. I guess. Let me ask the mayor. Do you guys want to keep these or? Uh, ask uh, um, sure. Sarah. If you want to leave them behind, we'll take them. I had not seen that one. It's really pretty. Detailed. Yes, absolutely. If I think maybe Sarah might want to.
Okay, we're back in session here and we're going to <clears throat> move forward. Um, did you want to go ahead and take over? Sure. Sarah? Um, just Sarah Maxfield, um, Director of Economic Development, City of Delray Beach, just rejoining everyone in progress. We've seen two really great presentations so far this morning. We've got two more left. And so I just wanted to introduce Heatherwood Luxury Rentals, and they are up next. Great. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, thank you to the commission for allowing us the opportunity to speak today. It's, uh, you know, we're we're very uh, excited and um, we're fortunate to be within a small group like this that um, uh, is a select few, and um, to be considered in this group is um, is meaningful to us. So wherever it goes, we we appreciate the time that you're giving us. Um, my name's Chris Capiz. Uh, I'm with uh, Heatherwood. I'm the president of the organization. I'm joined by uh, Douglas Partrick who is the owner and my partner. Uh, and we're also joined by other members of the Heatherwood team here. And um, we're very excited about the prospect and the opportunity to redevelop and revitalize the Delray Beach Golf Course. Um, it is a once in a generation opportunity. Um, we realize that uh, there is great competition for this opportunity, but my job for today and, and my goal is to establish the differentiating factors, right? What makes Heatherwood special? and why would you choose us against the rest of the field? So um, high level, right? We're gonna create on our own financing, no cost to the city of Delray Beach, an 18 hole championship golf course, right? Fully, fully rehabilitate and renovate and rebuild the front nine and then preserve and restore the Donald Ross back nine. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, we have Tyler Ray on our team, who is the premier Donald Ross historian and preservationist in the US, okay? Tyler has uh, renovated and restored over 30 Donald Ross courses throughout the country, including 350 holes of play, which is significant for anybody. We're going to fully renovate the interior and exterior amenities around the clubhouse, again, at no cost to the taxpayer. And we're going to manage and operate the golf course at no cost to the taxpayer. Currently, the city pays the golf course operator a fee annually, right? So what we're proposing is to take responsibility for the course, no risk for the city of Delray, and guarantee a payment to the city, and then on top of that, give a profit share. So if Heatherwood does well, the city of Delray does well. Okay, so um, how can we make this sort of offer with such certainty? Well, we're, we're specialists in this, and this is important, which is this is our core expertise, right? We're a fully integrated in-house operator of golf and multifamily communities. We're one-stop shop. Nobody else can say that, right? We've been uh, owning and operating public golf courses and managing them for six decades, okay? There aren't that many organizations throughout the country that can make that statement. And what's the reason we're here? Is because this opportunity, opportunity is a singular opportunity for us that we're looking at because of our core expertise. What else are some of the separators that we have? We give the city unmatched stability. How do we do that? We've never sold a multifamily community. We're not merchant builders. So at the end of the day, when we build something, we own and operate it. We have a 70 year history. We started off as single family home developers in the 50s. And we've evolved, right, to golf course and multifamily. What's the second big separator? We've never taken third party capital. So as the uh, markets continue to deteriorate, interest rates continue to go up. We're funding this via Heatherwood equity, right? The equity stack comes from us. We don't, we're not uh, beholden to the public markets. We don't have third party investors. This comes from Heatherwood. So we can provide incredible stability in a turbulent market. And what's one of our other separators? The last bullet there, deep historical experience with protracted entitlement process. I would tell you that, you know, we've spent decades working in some of the highest barrier to entry markets in the country. 
And this is a, a complicated and complex redevelopment. And there are multiple adjacencies alongside that need to be executed at the highest level that they can be executed. So let's just talk about some of our most recent experience here. Um, so Sun River at Pine Hills Country Club, uh, that's the uh, expansion of 140 units. Uh, that's hole six that you see along the right there on the top picture. And again, it's, it's very um, applicable to what we're talking about here. That's the expansion of a 1,500 unit community. It's like a city. And everything that we're talking about here, golf, driving range, short game, putting, restaurant, bar, interior, exterior amenities. Okay, so although this is a lot, what we're talking about at Pine Hills is a lot larger, right, it's directly applicable to what we're doing now. We're also finishing up construction on Spiring Golf Club, which is uh, an enhancement and repositioning. It's a repositioning of the old executive Heatherwood course, which was a, a short 18 hole, and we repositioned it for nine holes and 200 units. And we've completely rebuilt the course. From, from ground up. And again, the same sort of program, clubhouse, interior, exterior amenities. And early returns are really strong. Uh, Spy Ring is being compared to Sweetens Cove, which if you're familiar with golf, it, Sweetens Cove is part of Peyton Manning's group that, um, and most consider it the best nine hole in the country. And we're getting early accolades like that. So what's the elephant in the room, right? Well, we're, we're the new market entrant. Right? We, we haven't done work in Florida before, okay? But what are the mitigating factors? We're partnering with Suffolk Construction, who I, I would argue is the most well-respected GC in the entire region. And I think what's telling uh, potentially for the commission is not only are we partnering with them, but Suffolk surveyed the fields and said, we're gonna partner with us. They're gonna partner with Heatherwood. And so you have demonstrated decision-making based on their expertise, their understanding of the local real estate market, building construction, and what we can bring to the table. So um, with that, I'm going to introduce um, Chris Kennedy, who is uh, with Suffolk and is the head of their pre-con uh, group, to talk a little bit about their capabilities. Morning. Uh, Chris Kennedy, Vice President with Suffolk Construction. Thrilled to be here. I actually moved to Palm Beach County almost 30 years ago as Suffolk employee number one. So I've been fortunate to be part of our growth from, from day one. I always say the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, and in those almost 30 years, we've grown to over 350 employees. Uh, we put in place over 15,000 residential units. And really, I think what's important uh, for the commission to know is from a resources, from financial stability, uh, from expertise, experience, um, we're completely comfortable uh, executing this project. Um, we also have a lot of experience uh, building uh, and renovating uh, golf, golf course clubhouses, UC Addison Reserve, the Polo Club, Woodfield. Again, uh, we're very comfortable uh, with all aspects of, of uh, this project. I think the, the biggest thing that we add, particularly when we're brought in this early, is to add predictability to the whole process. By partnering with Heatherwood and the design team from day one, we give predictability to the budget by giving regular updates. We give predictability to the schedule by creating realistic schedule, permitting, uh, and construction. And really, I, I always say when we do our job of pre-construction, the construction phase is the easy part. Uh, and really, it's most of our portfolio were brought in early. We partner with the design team. We keep everything on track. We drive the process and uh, just thrilled to have the opportunity here. Back to Chris. Thank you, Chris. Um, so why Heatherwood, why Delray right now? Well, um, like we discussed earlier, um, we were entering the submarket with our demonstrated strengths, right? This is our core expertise. And um, the city could have a best in class execution because we're both looking for the right partner together at the right time. And so that has the potential to make for a great marriage, right? You have a convergence of interests right now that are uh, stars aligning a little bit. And again, we're competing with some very big names here, but I would encourage the commission to take a hard look at our resume and dig into our background and our stability and what we've done throughout this time. Um, 
I want to talk a little bit about our golf, bullet number three, our golf operations domain expertise. I'm going to introduce Jimmy Conway, who's our vice president of golf operations. Jimmy's been with the company for almost four decades. And it's important that we talk about what our qualifications are of being a private operator of public golf courses, the quality of what we actually deliver year in and year out. After we build it, right, we're going to put the dollars into it. We want to make sure that the city has something beautiful going forward for an extended period of time. And we've demonstrated that aptitude. And that's what separates us from the field. So um, I'm going to hold, uh, hand it over to Jimmy, who's going to uh, talk a little bit about, uh, again, expertise and vision a little bit. Jimmy. Thanks, Chris. Good morning. Like Chris said, my name is Jimmy Conway. I am the Vice President of Golf Operations. Uh, I am actually two months short of my 38th year anniversary. Um, and I say that um, due for this, for this company, it is all about longevity. Uh, it is all about mentoring and bringing the people along. We have a, we have a, proven, a proven way of, uh, of building and operating uh, that seems to work, uh, and we want to continue that. Um, so why? Why would I do this? It's, it's extremely just passion passion for, for, for the customers. I mean, being a golfer, being a young golfer and growing into this position, um, you know, just um, the, the customer service, it's, you know, you build a great golf course, you have a wonderful layout, you have great conditions. What else do you need? And what brings people back is the way they're treated. Hi, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so. That's what I train the staff to do. This is important for us. This is our livelihood. This is what we do. This is my life, um, our, our passion. And this, uh, and this company has, has given us all the right tools and all the right teams. Uh, and as I speak about team, um, I'd like to uh, tell you my, my, main, my main teammate is Adam Jesse. Um, he has a sterling pedigree. Um, he is an on-staff manager at Augusta National in 2000 during the Masters. Uh, he also served as managing uh, partner and team uh, to Shinnecock Hills in 2004 for the U.S. Open. Um, and he is bringing us, you know, we're very proud to say this, that in a saturated market on Long Island of about 140 golf courses and 120 mile strip, um, we get competition. We understand what that's like. And we are extremely proud in the public golf course sector to say that we are right behind Bethpage State Park. Um, which has had a U.S. Open, a PGA, and is soon to have a, uh, a Ryder Cup. So uh, I think that's very impressive in, in what we tend to do. Um, so yes, we offer great playing conditions. Um, who we are, this is who we are, uh, and this is what we do. Um, also, you know, in the, in the 38 years, uh, one thing I'm extremely proud of is I started a golf league one month after being hired. Uh, that league is still with us today going strong, going big, over 100 people deep. Um, we have many different leagues and also a, a diversity of opportunity uh, with three ladies leagues and uh, juniors. So we're very proud of that. Um, we have a professional staff that sure they teach, they give clinics, they continue to grow the game, um, and we give back junior clinics uh, monthly, um, PGA Junior League, um, many of these kids go on to be hired by me as cart guys and sometimes even move on to getting into the golf business. And, you know, that's just something that I, I share that passion with to try and uh, to af afford these, these children something that's been very good to me. Um, we do community wine and dines. Uh, we're not just about golf. We're, we're bringing the community together. We do, we do wine and cheese parties. We do club fittings. We do wedge fittings. Um, fundraisers every quarter um, we have something that we try to do and we take recommendations from our community whether it's uh, wounded warriors or toys for tots or just something to give back and basically that is what our company is all about giving and taking right this is what we do we do this in-house and we do it as a community the golf business is not just the golf business, but it's the people business. And the people are our livelihood. And that's what we've been so successful in. It's about building relationships, and it's about building trust. So I take great honor uh, of, of, of being the vice president of the golf operations. But don't let that confuse you with where my roots are. You know, sure, budgets have to be met. Um, capital improvements have to be met. And we do that. We meet as a team um, 
actually a couple times a month to do that, but I'm in the field. Um, that's still my first passion. Um, that's still my first love of giving back, of something that's been extremely good to me. Um, my staff, like I said, learns to know people's names. It's our team. Um, our whole entire team, including our owner, Doug Partrick, and our president, Chris Capice, uh, came down in the middle of last year, uh, and we played the facility. And, you know, after we played the facility and we knew that this was, was open, uh, you know, we sat and we discussed what is it that we can do to make this better. Well, we know what we can do, but what we want to show the city, what we want to tell the city is, you know, we want to bring back the jewel of the community. Uh, and that's what it seems like has been missing with, with the golfers here. We want to give everybody here a country club lifestyle to the public. This is who we are again, and this is what we do. So I, I can't stress that enough. Um, I feel like the time is perfect, and the city and Heatherwood's interest just align here. I thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Chris? Sean, I'm sorry. Good afternoon, uh, City Commission. Um, my name is Sean Sally. I am with Heatherwood as the Director of Planning and Development. Um, it's, it's amazing to see all of the, you know, the experience that Heatherwood really brings to bear and some of the examples that, uh, that we were able to share uh, through these slides uh, with respect to golf and residential communities. Um, but I think you know, what's, what's, what's really as important is you know, this is not a one-size-fits-all uh, proposition. Uh, there were stated goals uh, within the city's RFP, right, that, that come out of, of, of community input, and, and we understand that this is a public process, um, and we respect that and embrace it. Um, so we just really wanted to uh, project, um, you know, firmly and strongly that we took note and responded to the city's goals as stated in the RFP, and that really served as the foundation uh, to, our, to our proposal. So maintaining the integrity of the Donald Ross back nine, uh, maintaining an 18-hole championship course, renovating the golf course, uh, excuse me, renovating the clubhouse, renovating the maintenance uh, facility, uh, utilization by non-golfers, right, very important. It's, a, it's an entire city, this is an asset uh, that again is uh, is it transcends um, you know uh, all all city residents and walks of life. Uh, the infrastructure improvements, raw water irrigation uh, that are required um, as part of the golf uh, upgrade and, and timing of such. Uh, housing, multifamily housing, uh, all of the work that the city is doing in terms of planning and revitalization. This this site, um, while it's golf. Uh, focused and and rightfully so you know there's definitely an opportunity for synergy prominent access off of uh, West Atlantic to uh, reduce the uh, traffic and improve safety on on uh, Homewood and Highland those are you know single-family neighborhoods uh, workforce housing um, and and again the ability for um, in the case of a you know public private partnership um, a private entity to come in long-term partner with with the city um, take on that that financial um, uh, responsibility um, and, and give back to the community and the city that's really a win-win uh, uh, proposition uh, that you know I, I know you've heard a lot about today and and, and we couldn't agree uh, we couldn't agree more uh, so the slide that you're looking at now is really uh, the overview sort of the project components uh, that we'd like to uh, put forth um, so I'll start if I can just kind of go through uh, briefly uh, the golf restoration, which again is the most important. Um, so the the, the front nine um, through the uh, um, through our, our golf architect Tyler Ray, as Chris mentioned, we see an opportunity to do a reconfiguration of the front nine to really uh, in the in the vein of, of Donald Ross, uh, really restore bunkers, greens, fairway widths. Uh, with with minimum reconfiguration, but really enhancing enhancing the play and, and having it play uh, as a seamless uh, 18 holes. Um, you have an opportunity here to expand um, your water features, uh, right? So that they're they're more uh, you know prominent within the uh, within the course. Um, 
more seamless flow of play. Uh, we propose uh, uh, more of a two loop of four and five holes. Um, again, that really then uh, segues into the, uh, the back nine, uh, Donald Ross. Um, and of course, the irrigation system, um, you know, reclaimed water uh, uh, system that is aging, uh, that, uh, that we fully plan to, uh, to restore, and we've put dollars into that, uh, into that proposal that I'll go through uh, brief, briefly uh, in just a minute. Uh, the, the back nine, the Donald Ross um, uh, design course, we do not propose any alteration to the configuration of the Donald Ross nine holes. Um, yes, we propose some uh, retrofitting, green shaping, reconstruction of bunkers, um, but to really bring the course back to the, the Donald Ross, um, you know, uh, 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 intended design. Um, so again, just want to emphasize that we fully uh, embrace the Donald Ross design and we do not propose to alter that configuration in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the cart bridges that cross the, uh, the drainage canal, um, the RFP mentioned replacement of, of the South Bridge, restoration of the North Bridge. Uh, we looked at both and we feel like we can re replace, fully replace both cart bridges. Uh, and we've also factored that into our, uh, to our budget and our, on our pro forma. Um, so we think that's very important. Uh, cart paths, um, uh, again, we're, we're, we're fully in on, on restoring uh, the, the Donald Ross uh, nine holes uh, and enhancing um, uh, to, again, make this a, uh, a full 18 hole uh, championship course as it currently is uh, with uh, through enhancements. The golf course uh, clubhouse, we've heard a lot about that this, uh, this morning um, and Heatherwood fully embraces the current clubhouse, the 15,000 square foot clubhouse. We think it's, a, it's prominently located, right? It's got beautiful views and vistas of the Donald Ross uh, uh, you know, back nine to the south. Um, it's at a, a, a great location. It has great bones. Um, the layout is, is very, you know, is, is optimal. We're proposing a few um, internal programming modifications, um, but, you know, in terms of a refresh, um, exterior and interior, um, you know, we feel like there's a, there's a sweet spot. Um, and again, some minor reprogramming um, to the, the restaurant and venue space to, again, keep it as a, as a prominent site for banquets, weddings, community organization uh, events, uh, but also providing some additional amenity to both the residents, the golfers, um, and potential residential tenants that, that we'll talk about um, uh, shortly. Uh, but again, this is a, this is a, a restore of, the, of this you know, beautiful, beautiful 15,000 square foot clubhouse. Um, the parking lot adjacent to it, again, we, we, uh, there was a lot of conversation about it, but yes, a full resurfacing, a full uh, drainage uh, uh, system that would um, you know, improve the, uh, uh, not only the approach right, to, the, to the clubhouse, it's what you see on the way in, um, but really just uh, improving the, uh, the, the civil infrastructure um, is very important to us and, and to the city, of course. Um, I mentioned the raw water uh, improvements. Uh, you know, we're putting over a million dollars into that, uh, into that, uh, the, the restoration of raw water. That would be done as part of the, the golf course restoration, uh, not after. Um, so we understand that, you know, we want to have that done uh, in tandem. Um, it's important for, uh, for the city. It's important for the play. And we know that, you know, for many years, this has sort of been a, uh, you know, as, as uh, investigations and assessments of the infrastructure have taken place, this has risen, uh, right, to a very important piece of, uh, important component of this overall, uh, overall program. Um, and the maintenance building, uh, just off to the east. Uh, we understand, you know, we, we've seen it. It's sort of a, you know, a, a Butler Building-esque. Um, it, it needs some TLC um, for both functionality and, and structural uh, integrity. And, and that's also part of our, uh, part of our proposal. Um, again, you know, the, the sort of the, the back of house is as important as, as the, the course itself, right, to, for its, uh, to maintain its long-term sustainability. Um, what this all, though, does is, is provide a real opportunity for, uh, for appropriately scaled uh, housing. Um, and, 
you know, we do uh, propose, and, and there are a lot of synergies, of course, right? Mixed use. Um, we talk about mixed use just to the east of the property where you have a mixed use zoning or uh, zoning code. You have a, uh, a busy train station, right? So a mix of uses really, we're sort of just uh, uh, pulling that west a little bit, but again, contextually sensitive. Um, we do that, you know, all over and we feel like there's a huge opportunity here. You have single family to the west. Again, the mixed use to the east, really a, a three-story direct access, townhome style, um, uh, uh, appropriate density um, at 360 units um, is a real, you know, it's a gateway to the, to the, uh, to the golf course. It, it provides sort of that continuous, you know, activity along uh, West Atlantic. You have a multimodal corridor, which is very important, um, you know, I think to the city. So we're really embracing that and, and we think it's very complimentary. Uh, again, providing uh, the opportunity for new residents to, uh, to, um, to be accommodated by, you know, a new diverse uh, housing product. Uh, again, fitting in seamlessly with the with the surrounding uh, the surrounding community. Um, that housing takes up, or that that residential uh, takes up uh, roughly 10 acres. So so similar to what you've heard uh, this uh, this morning. Um, again, we think that uh, that that's an appropriate size, and again, it offers it continues the opportunity for to maintain an 18 hole uh, golf course. Um, just quickly on the the economics. Um, uh, we do propose an operating and maintenance agreement for uh, the golf course. So a little bit different than a, than a lease, um, a little bit more flexibility, I think, for the for the city. Um, but we provide a guaranteed uh, guaranteed rate uh, uh, fee to the city, uh, and then a profit share. Um, so as we mentioned, you know, it, when Heatherwood, when the golf course does well, the city does well, um, and so uh, that would encompass the uh, the golf. Um, so operations, maintenance. And capital improvements, right? So uh, the bond of capacity that uh, that the city has, you know, some of that does not need to go into the, the, the or be earmarked for the course. It could be, uh, you know, utilized for the many other priorities that I'm sure, um, you know, the, the the city has on an ongoing basis. Um, so all of that capital uh, improvement would would fall on on Heatherwood, and we do have a. Uh, a capital reserve that we included in our proposal that would, um, again, uh, make sure that uh, the, the course uh, for the long term maintains its, uh, its uh, sustainability and, and prominence, again, for the, uh, for the Delray community. Um, so happy to answer any, any questions you may have uh, at the end of the presentation, but um, I will now turn it back to, uh, to Chris. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Tom. So so let's I, I, let's move quickly here. I know we're running out of time, but sequence here was important, right? So arrival sequence coming down off of West Atlantic and how you make your way down to the clubhouse itself is important, right? In, in order to meet the goal of bringing in your primary entry there, you have to meander a spine road down south to the clubhouse. So how did we do that? Well, we situated all the residential at the, at the north end. Right, which is what many others have done. But like Sean said, we've created a contextual design, right? Going from the single story and two story uh, single family home residential neighborhood to the west, we have three stories here in the multifamily, and then scaling it up obviously to the commercial to the uh, east, right? So it's that contextual link between the two. And we thought that that was critically important, okay? As you make your way into the, uh, the community itself, you're going to wind down past the canal. And again, in playing this course, there's water on it. You can't see it anywhere. It's staggering how little water you see on a golf course here. So for us, the idea is how do you open up the, the views to that canal a little bit more? As you come down right, the spine road, you start to see those intermittent views of the golf course. And then when you hit this point, the golf course opens up to you. You have your largest pond right in front of you. That pond already exists roughly, right? So the opportunity is to clean it up, fountains, make it active, and then you have a great view shed all the way down to that clubhouse, which is gonna be fully restored and fully beautified at that point. And then you're at a landing spot where, how do you create that moment of, at the landing place, right? Which is, so what are you doing? Great best-in-class signage, the four-sided clock, right, cobble on the streets, mature landscaping, right, how do you make this feel like a real arrival? Because it's not just for the golfer, it's for other residents of the community, somebody that's visiting 
right, for the wedding, somebody that's coming to play and go to the driving range on their first date. These are the things that we're thinking about because this is what we live in, what we do every day. Okay, uh, Tyler Ray, I'm gonna touch on Tyler Ray real quick. Um, we talked about him before. What's important to understand is you already have Donald Ross. You have the Babe Ruth of designers, right? It, you have other big names that were just standing here before me, but you already have Babe Ruth. So it's our job to enhance what's already there and celebrate that. So, um, you know, in summation, um, we're incredibly excited to be here. Um, we think we're the sleeper of the group. We're not the most well-known, but like I said, we'd like you to look under the hood a little bit and, um, and consider us. So thank you for your time, and the, the team is here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Chris. I think it's Chris and it is. Sean, is that right? Chris. And Sean, and Sean yes. Okay, thank very you. Good. All right. Thank you all. Thanks for the great presentation. So to my colleagues, I think we started here, so we'll go down on the other end and sure. have yeah. uh, Commissioner Boylston. So I'll start by saying I know, um, you know you're, you're, you're new to developing Florida, mm -hmm. um, but you attracted some incredible partners um, that a lot of us in Delray Beach, uh, Delray Beach know. So I appreciate that. I appreciate the unique approach that you've taken uh, with your proposal. And I just, just have a, a, a few follow-up questions. So um, again, I look at this proposal kind of, kind of a little bit like the uh, last applicant. And I'm seeing you, you're, you're still taking 10 acres. Yep. The cell phone tower, I didn't see that reference, but I'm guessing that stays? No. It leaves. It leaves. It does. OK, because the course isn't designed to take advantage of the space really that the cell phone tower yes. is going to be removed from in your design but okay so that that and then we have the clubhouse and parking staying in the same so there's Correct. no like the mayor brought up before there's no like um net it, it really is 10 acres being taken mm -hmm. and, and then a the subtraction of our clubhouse and our parking which you know that's that's a little tough for us however i do see that your project is only three stories that your project as far as density is the lowest and there's you know, some give and take with that, right? Walk me through the decision, and don't get me wrong, I, I think it would be a beautiful experience to drive mm -hmm. in and get that view. Yeah. But walk me through the decision. Right now we have a golf, we have an entrance to a golf course that goes through a community. Yep. You're going to add an entrance mm -hmm. that goes through a community. Yeah. So now we're gonna have two entrances where you're driving through people's communities. Yeah, so, um, so the thought process was, it was twofold, right? We understood that West Atlantic is obviously the main thoroughfare, right? And it makes sense to bring in the entry there. I think for us, what it did was it gives optionality because like, you know, some of the other presenters have talked about and, and the commission has talked about is it doesn't, the process doesn't stop here, it continues. So if you can bring, successfully bring that entrance off of uh, West Atlantic, you can potentially eliminate the back entrance, what's the primary entrance now, and take traffic off of those residential streets, which uh, I would think from a homeowner perspective, existing homeowner perspective, would be attractive to them. So it's an option now, which we can you know, bring all the golf traffic that way. If that is something that was meaningful, again, to be determined more, mm -hmm. but at least this plan now gives optionality. I appreciate your flexibility on that. What is your vision for the entrance on Atlantic for our golf course? I mean, it's really, to me, it looks like it's going to feel like an entrance to a community. Mm. Yeah. And then our golf course is kind of hidden. Yeah. Uh, and so um, I, I think for us, this is, I think we do this as well as anybody. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't say that lightly. Um, so, you know, for us, I, I, I see, you know, stately, I mean, we're big, uh, stately monuments, masonry, right? Like I said, mature trees along the front, framing it as you come in. You're gonna be able to see through to the golf course. It, it is an odd condition right now, right? Where you have this main thoroughfare, multi lanes, mm -hmm. right? Both ways, and you're alongside a golf course. So the fact that there's a buffer there, I actually think it improves the golf play situation, frankly. Um, and so for us, can you see it the way that you can see it today? No. And um, right, but yeah. it, it it will have a residential feel as you drive in. But frankly, you have a residential feel as you drive in now through the other side. So, I think it's I think it's I think it's a better condition just coming off of West Atlantic by itself. And that that was the that was the thought process. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate it. That's all my questions. Okay. Very good. 
Commissioner Johnson. Good morning, still. Good morning. Thank you so much for your interest in Delray Beach. Um, it's got to be a little daunting not having been here, so that kind of makes you. Um, some people say, well, they're not from Florida, but uh, I love to see your offerings from your other locations, and I appreciate everything you've done. I also consider it maybe a good thing that uh, the golf course is shielded, but you can still see it. I um, just like your innovative thinking as to a new approach. Thank you. And with that, I really don't have too many other questions other than welcome to Florida. Thank you. Good. Vice Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, appreciate the presentation. Uh, obviously, the Mr. Ray aspect uh, and his experience is, is very impressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, just a couple questions based on what, what you spoke about. Yep. You talk about water hazards. I hate water hazards because I seem to hit the water all the time. But are you proposing to add some more water features in your design? So the, the the pond itself, the main right, that's the that main pond at the center is oh, really wow. the, as <laughs> sort of I found it as well. Um, <laughs> it, it it is right. It's covered by you know lily pads. It's not really attractive. It needs to be cleaned up. So it it is roughly right now that configuration that you see is roughly in the same location as as it is right now. But at the end of the day, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to clean it up. You're going to have to reline it. You're going to have to make sure that you get some action in there via, you know, bubblers and fountains and so on and so forth. So I, I think between the canal, that, and that pond, and we have another, but between those two, those are going to be two prominent elements in the actual golf play and also, like I said, in the arrival sequence. Sure. The other question I had, which was uh, a major part, I thought, uh, from the first two presentations, was the practice area, the top tracer, the bays. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I see, at least in my backup, that you are not providing mm -hmm. a practice area. And I didn't obviously see one in your presentation. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to touch on that. Yep, clarify. So, um, so the driving range itself, we are proposing to keep it in the same place and renovate, OK? Um, we discussed internally, do we handle this via technology? Right, because there are so many, you know, really interesting sort of golf simulators and, 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 and really realistic now. And you can create a, a great lifestyle. Um, and we're actually um, building one in, an, in another community that's going to be seeding golf simulators, so on and so forth. But that's in a different type of community. Here, you already have a, a great driving range. And so for the golfer, they want to get out there and they want to hit balls. I, I want to get out there and hit balls when I when I start. And like I said, it's not just for the golfer though, right? It's for the first date. It's for the guys who are going to have a beer and we're going to hit some balls out there. So I don't think that at the end of the day, we didn't feel like the technology was right to replace the real driving range in this particular condition. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I, I have to tell you, I don't disagree. I think that there are, there's, there's limited space here. Um, it's the truth. And yeah. um, I would love to see all of these great things that have been presented come forward, but I'm not so sure that they're realistic yeah. when you're starting to talk about um, what, what, what we can and can't do with the course yeah. and still maintain what we're trying to maintain at the course. Yes. Um, so I agree with that. Um, the workforce housing units that you're going to be providing, the 36, yes. Yes. Um, again, is that a, a range? How is that going to work? Okay, talk to me about yeah, that. Yeah, so it's 10% it's, it's at 120% okay. AMI. Okay, so you're at the highest, the yeah. highest that we're going to be and, doing uh, here. Yes, yeah. correct. And, and I mean, listen, I, I understand that. You're at the luxury end of this. I, you're not looking at this as an apartment complex. You're looking at this as single family or the multifamily. Yep. So I, 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 I get that. Um, thanks for your honesty. Yes. Um, and then I, I think one of my colleagues already discussed the um, the acreage. It's really yes. going to be a, a, a true 10 acre plus yes. what we've got already designated. And um, how many yards of golf? You know, I know that came in on the last two presentations. I didn't hear that with yours. It was, it's par 71. 71. Okay. 64,000? 64,000. 6,400, you mean? 6,400, sorry. Right, thank you. Okay, so it's par, it was a par 71, did you say? Did you say par 71? Thank you. Okay, very good. Um, let me make sure I got everything here. Uh, like the one-stop shop, guys. Just want to make sure that I, you, 
you know that I heard that, and that you're also embracing the Donald Ross. Very yes. important. You're the one not changing anything on that back nine. Yes. Is it the back nine or the front nine? It's the back. back. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, I think that was it. So I think you guys really covered it, and my colleagues covered the other questions that I had. So again, thank you all so much for coming in and thank doing you. this presentation and for um, uh, being here in Delray Beach, giving us your, your best shot. I, I right. really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sure. Um, is, is it okay if we, we have one, one more uh, yeah. answer? Thank yeah. you. You got time. I, I'd like, hello, my name is Douglas Partrick and I am the owner of Heatherwood. Oh, and, okay. You know, uh, the question would be, uh, why Heatherwood? Why Heatherwood? Mm -hmm. I think it's important to emphasize, long after, um, Maybe one of the other uh, potential uh, applicants here is long gone. It's important to understand the culture and, and what this company is all about is we do not sell. We do not build and run. As Chris emphasized, we still own a community we built in the 1960s. We reinvest in our community, we reinvest in our towns, and we reinvest in our people. And I think for the residents, that is critical. Whether or not you're looking for a doctor or a dentist, where are you going to go? You're going to go to somebody that's got a reputation that's impeccable. Check us out. This is what we do. We're doing it now up north. And this is what we intend to bring down here. We are a company of high integrity and we will perform for you. And that's where our heart is. Thank you. Well, I thank you so much, and thanks for stepping forward. Um, and uh, thank you all for your presentation today. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Sarah. That was one of the ones that you usually do, is who's up here that it hasn't come forward. <laughs> all right, now we have our final. Well, it's almost afternoon, almost. Oh, almost. We're doing um, good on timing. I did want to make a point of clarification. Uh, the There is a cell tower on the property. However, it's back by the maintenance shed. What we're talking about that's actually in the center of the property is an AM radio tower. And that is on a month-to-month -month lease. And um, proposers had access to all of those documents during pre-proposal and during the RFP process. So they are aware of, of that. I just wanted to make sure that on the record that that it stated that yes, there is a cell tower consideration. It's backed by the, the maintenance shed, but what's right there in the middle that everybody's aware of is an AM radio tower that's been there since God was a boy. Okay, so let me ask a question. Both of those are in our purview to be able to, or, or whoever is coming in, they're able to move those. It's not like we have a 30 year lease or anything like that, or what? What's with that? The cell tower lease is a little bit different, but the AM radio tower That's is a currently month -month. on a month to month, the and cell we tower, we're not able to move that. Okay. And I'd like to ask. We could um, potentially uh, by mutual agreement, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's as easy to just move that one as the AM tower. Okay. Gotcha. And that one is, uh, you, that's more central in, in the, in the, on the grounds, correct? The AM, AM radio tower is the one that you can see that's like smack dab in the middle of the front, the front yeah. course. Right. But the cell tower itself it's is back, in the back. back behind the maintenance correct. shed. It really isn't. I know where it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if this is the right time to ask before we go on to the next yeah, presenter. Right on. We only, I only heard, help me if it, if I missed it, I only heard one presenter talk about, so far, talk about the maintenance shed. Um, that's a part of uh, the development or they don't talk okay. about it. Is it something in the background that we'll get? They all had it. They all had it in the full proposals that you have access to. It's, it's addressed in each one of those proposals. Find it. I can yeah. help you find it, you bet. Thank you. Um, one other mention before we move forward, um, I just, to put on the record as well, you know, our, our neighboring community in Fort Lauderdale is currently pursuing a similar process with really, with, related to their Orange Brook golf course. It was um, today. Yep, and they, it was in the paper today, and I just don't want folks to confuse because we they are also working with CBRE. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want there to be any confusion between our project and their project. They're separate projects. Um, the commission here is not considering that much density um, 
in agreement to, with our P3. It's a very different project, so I just didn't want the public or anybody who's listening to to confuse the two. So um, Delray Beach, Orange Brook, two different communities, two separate projects. Hollywood, Delray. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, but you know how it goes. Yes. Okay. Very good, thank you. Are we ready to move forward with our last? Great, so our last presenter is Related Group, and um, I'm sure that they ha they have a, they're they eager to answer your questions as well, so I will just, without further ado, allow them to step forward. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah. Before we begin, uh, Madam Chair, um, I have just uh, some larger versions of our golf course and the rendering, so, um, were submitted to the city as part of the evalu technical evaluation committee. I just you wanted to one. There's seven in there. You get to each one, take one. That way you can see it a little Perfect. bit clearer. Thank you. Absolutely. You yeah, yeah, yeah. L please let Sarah view it first. Yeah. I don't want no n no changes. Thank you so much, Sarah. So uh, still good morning. Uh, <laughs> just by a couple minutes. Uh, as you know, my name is Neil Schiller with Government Law Group 137 Northwest First Avenue in Delray Beach. I'm here today honored uh, to represent two titans of their industries, Related Group and Nicholas Design Group. Uh, I'd like to introduce Ron Melendez right now, Executive Vice President of the Related Group, who is going to... Clicker. Oh, it's okay. Who's going to introduce the team. Right. Okay, good morning. Good morning. So at Related Group, we have a very rich history in South Florida. Um, we have a portfolio of over $50 billion. More recently, our current portfolio is about $10 billion between condo and multifamily market rate business. The market rate business alone is about $6 billion at the moment. So we, we're very robust. We have a lot of great ideas, and we have a wonderful team of people who come together to you know, focus on communities, think about the added value that we can bring to communities, and make projects successful. With me, we have Matt Flowers. He's our Senior Strategic Development Officer. We also have Timothy Zaytoun. He's our Florida Development Acquisitions person. But you know, there is a strategy around the people that we chose to bring together as part of this team. Um, we thought what was important for this project was to bring an architectural firm where we have a successful track record working collaboratively together, uh, not only just from a collaboration standpoint, but an architectural firm that has many success stories in and of themselves as an architectural firm. Also with Nicholas Design, we are so excited and proud to have them as part of our team. But very specifically with our architectural group, we're currently collaborating on five mid-rise projects with IBI Group, specifically Juan Caicedo. Juan is a partner of ours um, who we've worked on on multiple projects throughout South Florida. So together, the theme for this project is the ability of, to make things happen quickly. We have a pretty robust development program. The, our program includes a new state-of-the-art 25,000 square foot clubhouse. So ideas like arrival sequence, amenities and features, alignment with the community. Those are principles that need to be right up front. But the ability of going through the site plan approval process and going through and meeting with the design review board, you have a team of champions who have worked together, who know collaboratively what it takes to get things done quickly. So I'm proud to be working alongside Juan. Also, from the Nicholas Group, we have Ray Ball and Jim Wagner. These are true champions in the design of golf courses. Um, working with them, we were able to implement some key concepts to this project, right? Um, bringing in uh, collaboratively the discussion around what does it take to work the project in phases so that we can tackle some of the water issues that are encountered, um, specifically towards the wells, as well as how do we phase the ability of working along Atlantic and building a clubhouse while we tackle the well issues and start designing a phased approach to the renovation of the golf course. But more specifically, really respecting and, and making a much greater experience as it relates to driving range experiences and arrival sequences and the, the interaction between 
um, residents and the community and the golf course interface. So with that, oh, I'm sorry, uh, from a general contracting standpoint, what's unique about Related and the amount of work we have ongoing at the time, we have a self-performed division within Related. We're actively working on over $300 million with our self-performed division. But the mid-rise projects that I referenced where we worked collaboratively with Juan Caicedo and his group, uh, this is a list of contractors that we're currently working with. Balfour Beatty Construction, we're currently working on three projects with them. Um, current builders and cast construction, several other uh, couple of projects with them throughout Florida. And these are all mid-rise projects, same similar style and scale. So from a site plan review, um, these are folks that you know, we count on to make things happen. So we feel that the best approach here is to work with Delray in figuring out what the most cost competitive approach is, because that's similar to the culture that we follow at Related Group and working with the right contractor at the right time for the right price. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Tim, who will highlight a few key components, data points regarding our project so that we can transition over to Juan and we can talk about the building architecture. Tim. Thank you, hi everybody. Hello. So on this slide, I want to summarize um, the three components of our project here uh, before I hand it off to uh, the Nicholas team who will be able to tell you all about the routing plan and the golf itself. So on the top right corner, you can see the golf course. It's 7,160 yards. That's a par 72, 18 hole golf course with a championship level, which they will tell you all about soon. The clubhouse is a new clubhouse, again, on Atlantic. Uh, Ron spoke all about the arrival, arrival sequence, and Juan will tell you more about it, too. It's 25,000 square feet, and it's elevated so that it has this uh, great uh, vision from Atlantic Avenue. Uh, from the 25,000 square feet, there's 5,000 square feet that will be for uh, restaurant area and 20,000 square feet for all kinds of events, space, and um, golf, golf course uh, management. Uh, lastly, on the residential portion, you can see the main building in the middle. That's going to be a five-story building with 420 units. And next to it are four villas, which will have 24 units. So for a total of 444 units. Out of those units, we have 20% workforce housing. So we know that's very important, not just in the city, but throughout the state, it is very important for related. We have our own affordable housing division. So we, you know, this is a very important thing for us. 90 units total uh, will be for workforce. Um, as far as the apartments themselves, you know, we aim to uh, create larger homes so that to welcome families, um, and, and for residents to stay there in the long term, not just micro units where a resident might come here, stay for a year, and then move. So um, again, you know, you see the main building in the middle. I wanted to point out also the parking garage, which is going to be fully covered and wrapped around with apartments, meaning you won't have this. Nobody wants to see a parking garage when they're driving around Atlantic Avenue. So um, next, I'd like to introduce uh, the Nicholas team. Uh, with Ray, and they can tell you um, all about the routing plan, which you should have in front of you. Thank you. Well, I guess it's good afternoon now. Yes, it is. Uh, a few minutes after, but uh, it's a pleasure to be here. This is an exciting project, and uh, just to reintroduce Jim Wagner, he's our senior design associate and a member of the American Society of Golf Course Architects, very prestigious society. And to say we were elated to partner with Related, um, that's an understatement. They are a proven group. They've done a lot of work, and so it was a no-brainer when we were asked to team up with them. A little bit about Nicholas Design. We've been in the business for over 50 years designing golf courses all over the world. Uh, currently, as of today, we have 435 golf courses open for play around the world in 46 different countries and 30 United States. Many of those designs have been chosen as venues for some of the world's most important professional and amateur competitions, which Maybe one day Delray Beach Golf Club could be one of those, maybe not as significant, but local or state regional qualifiers, it'll certainly be capable of that. Uh, not only do we design golf courses, and when they're all said and done, we don't just go away. We pride ourselves, we're a brand, we help market and promote the golf course through our nicholas.com website platforms, our social media platforms, and the chairman of our company um, also is the owner of Golf Magazine and Golf.com and various other 
golf-centric companies. So those assets are available to the golf club to help get the word out. As we all know, Delray Beach is rich, rich in history, and the Donald Ross first 19, the first nine holes uh, is approaching its 100th anniversary next uh, in 2026, which might be a nice milestone for a grand opening celebration, perhaps. Uh, so we fully side and embrace with the city and uh, the idea of restoring a classic from the golden age of golf design. Our, our par 72 design measures just over, just under 7,200 yards. Uh, and within it, we're maintaining seven of the original Donald Ross nine holes. And that was partially because we're relocating the clubhouse, as you'll see in our plan, to the north. And to get returning nines and any kind of length, um, we found it the best option to to lengthen the golf course versus if we kept the golf course sent the clubhouse centrally located it was very hard to get the distances so i think most of those that are remaining in the center of your golf course would be 66 6700 yards um you know again the donald ross pedigree is very special and we would intend to engage and work with the donald ross society as we do restore, because they'll have historic photos, the original plan documents, and what have you. And, and unique to our design is that the front nine consists of three par fives and three par threes, something you don't always see. Just a little bit of a unique factor there. Still a, still a par 72. Uh, we, inc we will incorporate many of the Donald Ross features, such as close green to tee, um, tee to green relationship, diagonal hazards, switchbacks, punch bowls, double plateaus, all stuff you might not have ever heard of. Um, you know, there is no question, again, the Ross pedigree, I can't emphasize how important that is and, and, and the restoration and modernization is, is, is important. However, equally exciting is by relocating the clubhouse to the north, we're doing a totally new state-of-the-art driving range, full-length driving range, which will, in today's world, the technology that's available, top tracer and things for members or, or, or even instructors giving lessons. Uh, cell phone apps, it, it, it gamifies the range. So you're not just hitting golf balls. You're, it becomes more of an entertainment or gamification uh, aspect. And then contiguous to that, which I like to say is very in vogue now, are short games or putting courses. Um, and we, we envision a short game chipping area, a putting course or Himalaya course, if you may have heard them uh, called. And that, to me, creates a sense of community. Being adjacent to the clubhouse, that putting course could be open at night, it could be subtly lit, you're not talking towers, it's all ground lit, and it could be, it, it's a center for community, people can come with their family and friends, golf has become time consuming and expensive, so there's been this switch, again, right now, very in vogue, short courses are very popular, we're adding them to existing facilities all over the country. Um, in addition, uh, you know, the, the city, we envision, opportunities for uh, community partnerships with, whether it's a first tee program, whether it's the PGA HOPE program for benefiting uh, veterans, or maybe home course for the FAU Owls. Uh, those are just some of the ideas. But uh, with that, I think this, the, the chance for Delray to hit a home run and create a world-class public golf course, uh, there's no better team than uh, Related and Nicholas to execute that. Excellent. Juan, why don't you come up and talk us through some of your designs that goes forward, that goes back. Good afternoon, Juan Caicedo, IBI Group. Um, I'm also very proud of be, being part of this team. Actually, we put this, this uh, project together, we crafted this project in a very conscious way, uh, like we do with every project. We, are, we have actually worked with the City of Del Rey in other projects where we have taken the same approach, and we've won done projects from very small projects like the Kaufman and Lean office building on, on Congress to the design of the uh, Sunday Village in, in downtown. Um, so what we did is we actually took this, this project and we said, okay, there is, a, there is a series of single family homes to the west that we have to respect in scale and, and, and in character. There is a clubhouse that we need to uh, build, a brand new clubhouse that needs to be iconic and, and and, and create a, a landmark on the, for the city. And there is a component, a main component of this, what I call the hamlet, uh, on this uh, hamlet that is the, the, the residential component, the main component in the center. Now this main component in the center has been uh, articulated and broken into smaller pieces to allow for a landscape and actually these courtyards and landscape actually weave into it 
uh, to prevent the, the look of a massive uh, project on the, on the avenue and on the golf course for, for that matter. This series of courtyards actually provide uh, amenities for the residents as well as uh, nice views from the street uh, and from the golf course to the project. Um, let me see if I can, okay. Now, uh, in, this, in the arrival sequence, actually, as you come into the project, you are flanked on the, on the left side, on the west side, by the multifamily, or a portion of the multifamily, which is, by the way, is also composed as a series of small events. So like, if it looks like it's a more organic approach to the, to the building design, so it doesn't look as monolithic at the end. It's not as repetitive. It's a series of small events that actually create this building uh, uh, mass and architecture. So it almost creates an urban block um, that, that, that grew over time. And in access with that, I mean, the, main, the main highlight of the project really is the clubhouse, which is um, um, taking the, the architecture is, is inspired on the Art Deco style, which is historically tied to the city and is actually part of the, the city's uh, design styles uh, uh, and the architectural design guidelines. Um, what we did actually, we took the clubhouse and we lifted it up off the ground to allow for the kind of the utilitarian spaces, the golf, ma golf cart maintenance facilities, uh, back of house, storage areas, all to be underneath. And this cascading theatrical type of monumental stair actually, along with the ramp, uh, actually bring you up to this elevated plinth which is the, the main floor of the building. On that main floor, what you what you will see, and uh, these are some different images of the of the clubhouse. But you, the, what you will find is in the back of the project, uh, facing the golf course, we have this expansive veranda that actually, uh, as we have the restaurant, dining areas, and ent entertainment areas within the facility, this veranda actually frames the views to the golf course and to the to the um, uh, areas of the, the public areas, the tea uh, party areas, and all that. Um, the big houses, like I said, which are located on the west side of the of the main site plan, actually have three stories in height, two stories in height. I'm sorry, and they respect the character and the height of the the residential community to the west. The the project gets taller to the five stories in the center, and it goes back down to the six, to this basically two story clubhouse building. Um, in, in terms of the classic order of the elevation, actually, we, we, we crown this building with, with the, this sphere on top. And this sphere actually represents the golf court, the golf ball. There's a sculptural piece, a piece of art that actually tends to be illuminated, it's going to be illuminated. And the concept behind this is, is that it's basically the explosion of this golf ball that actually represents the, the game. And it actually relates to the community as a landmark. So as you drive on Atlantic Avenue, you clearly will see this, this uh, Monumental, monumental, iconic piece, as well as from from the from the course itself, and it's actually been held by the the main tower, which is actually uh, kind of uh, allegoric of the of the T. So this has symbolism behind everything that we do, and, and I wanted to make sure that that you understand that the, that we crafted this thing in a very meticulous way to not only represent what the the, the building uh, the building is is looking at but what it, how it relates to the community around it. So you can see actually this is from the veranda looking out into, into the golf course. This is the, the, the flat elevations and this is actually a ramp coming out from the veranda coming down, right down into the, into the tea potting area. Again, just a series of small pictures to show you that the building is not a one monolithic uh, statement. It's actually a series of small pieces that are come together, forming a, a village-like uh, uh, structure. This is the main arrival courtyard space. This is the, 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 the space where you come in uh, as a resident, and uh, it becomes one of the courtyards. And these are the, the big houses, which are on the west side. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm going to take a minute to explain and walk through our financial offer that we made to the city. It's uh, pretty straightforward. It comes in. Name again, just for the record. Oh, Matt Flowers, Related Group, Executive Vice President. So, uh, pretty straightforward Speak offer. Into the mic. Will do. Um, Two parts. The first part is $25 million for our seven-acre parcel. That $25 million 
would be used to fund the new 25,000 square foot clubhouse and restaurant, which we just walked through, the golf course renovations, maintenance facilities, bridge, shelter, and restrooms, uh, with ample money left over for the city after. Um, the second part is that uh, once complete, the golf club house, the golf course, all the improvements will be uh, still owned 100% by the city. So all net income generated by those uses would be retained 100% by the city. Related wouldn't have uh, any contingent interest or, or, or any kind of uh, claim against those cash flows. Those would stay entirely with the city. Um, so uh, we, we expect over the first 30 years alone, the golf course clubhouse restaurant to generate somewhere in the neighborhood of $48 million of net income. So to recap, it's a $25 million upfront payment. It's one phase. There's no wondering whether a second phase will ever close and when, uh, plus, you know, entire ownership of the, the restaurant club. Thank you. So with that, Tim will review the, the financial assumptions. Thank you. Yeah. Great, so I want to walk you through some of the revenues that will be generated for the city. So the first one is, of course, golf course revenue. Uh, we know it's important for the residents to have uh, access to this golf course at a reduced rate. So we're giving uh, close to 70 or 75% discount versus the market rate for those residents. And we understand that the city, uh, you know, the city should not have to pay for this new golf course. We're the ones paying for them, right? Likewise, the residents don't want their rates to increase. If they want to keep playing golf at this golf course, they can. Here, you see at the bottom, their yearly total average for residents is $27 compared to $87 for non-residents. So clear emphasis on the city of Delray Beach residents. I think it's very important. You know, people want to play in their own backyard. So we, you know, we, we thought that was uh, very significant. The rate can be as low as $10. Obviously, it depends on the time of day or the season, but so again, as low as $10 and $27 average. So uh, on this uh, sheet here, you can see years one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this is your typical financial statement where you see your revenues at the top, expenses at the bottom. So I'm gonna walk you through it rather quickly. Golf course revenues, we just went over them. I estimate to be around 40,000 rounds of golf being played with an average price of $60, which is somewhere between the residents and the non-residents. That gives you $2.4 million. Golf cart rentals, you know, those are very popular. Everybody wants the golf cart. Driving range, it's a $15 bucket for the driving range. I think that's very affordable. You know, we're thinking about making a rate, a rate that's specific for residents of Delray Beach. You know, that's definitely possible. I think that's the point here. Uh, and then other golf course revenues, that's, you know, your little gift shops and whatnot. Uh, next, you have you know, the second category of revenues, which is the restaurant, weddings, and, uh, you know, other revenues. So weddings are very popular. You know, I'm personally engaged in looking for a wedding venue. If this clubhouse existed today, I would definitely want to have my, my wedding there. So, um, you know, we have weddings. Uh, it's $15,000 is what I estimated. One and a half weddings per month is perfectly doable. And then your restaurant. You know, this is a triple net lease. We think $40 triple net is the market price here. Uh, so on a 5,000 square foot restaurant, you'll generate $200,000 in, in revenue from, from this restaurant alone. So total revenue for the golf course is $3.75 million a year, year one, right? And then you have your expenses, which we can fly through again. This management fee is a management fee for an operator. We intend to hire the top operator for this golf course. So we have set aside 5% of revenue. This is a very large number we'll be able to afford the best in the business, okay? Utilities, insurance, personnel, all those are pretty straightforward. Uh, we know the personnel is very important to keep maintenance of this golf course. You also have a line for landscaping, maintenance, and supplies. Overall, we think it's very important to buff up those, these expenses so that the golf course doesn't, um, you know, keeps its level, its quality, and doesn't deteriorate over time. Uh, net operating income, uh, over a million dollars estimated year one. This is all for you. So we're not putting any claims towards this cash. This is in addition to um, the $25 million payment that will go towards the, the course, of which 5.2 million will remain for your pockets. After that, you will generate this NOI, which I estimate to be a million dollars in year one. Uh, you have you know 30 year totals, 99 year totals, we start getting the spins here. It's 370 million over 99 years. Uh, overall, I think it's gonna be very profitable and I'm very excited for this. Um, 
you know, another source of revenue is, of course, property tax revenue. So we're breaking it down here. Um, there's different taxing authorities, obviously, in Palm Beach County. For the city of Delray Beach, you have the column all the way to the left. Uh, total totals are to the right and at the bottom. So 30-year total on property tax revenue is $40 million for the city. Um, that's significant also. Um, next, I want to go through a summary of cash flows. Uh, and uh, present values for those. So annual golf operation revenue over a 30 year total um, is a net present value of $50 million almost just from the golf course itself. Uh, and then you have this tax revenue over $100 million. I mean, you know, we're talking big numbers here. This is, this is the point. Um, so we're very excited about this uh, and I'll hand it off to, to Neil next. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Tim. Uh, to close, um, golf is a game that relies on, on numbers, inches, strokes, yards. Here are some important numbers for your consideration right before lunch. 7,160. That's the length that we've proposed, and I still believe the longest that was originally proposed. Um, 6,907. That's the length of your existing golf course. <coughs> Uh, and so you have a uh, Nicholas design here. Please ask them any questions about the design of the course. Uh, ask them about uh, additionally the seven of nine Donald Ross holes and what, if anything, that they could do to maybe uh, do a little bit more than just the seven. 25,000, that's a big number, but that's going to be the size of your new clubhouse located on Atlantic Avenue away from the residence. I think that is so important. And you've seen the design from local architect Juan Casado that shows an iconic, beautiful design that's going to be seen from, from uh, the golf course and from uh, Atlantic Avenue. Seven. Just seven. That's the number of acres of land we're seeking. The smallest number of acres. 444. Total number of units. Not the largest, not the smallest, but the most reasonable for seven acres of property. $27. That's the average Delray resident rate throughout the year. It could be as low as 10 based on time, but at time of day and, and, and day of month, et cetera, day of week, week of month, but uh, you get the point. They want to be sensitive to the Delray users and the Delray residents, and they are, they're committed to doing that. More than a million is the amount of golf revenue that they project from this golf course year one, not just year one, and more than any other proposer. 25 million payment. Up front, no risk, no phases. I think that's important. And in the last 250, when you had the slide today of the survey that 250 people at least uh, completed, if you look at what was important to those people, you're looking at Related's proposal. Related Group and Nicholas Design Group hit a hole in one with this proposal. We hope you will see that and select us accordingly. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, we'll start down here with uh, sure. Thank you, Vice very much. Mayor. Again, it was uh, again. We've had four great presentations. We're very lucky as a city. Um, I note that the clubhouse spectacular. Um, the the plans for the driving range, the the technology, the top tracer. It's great. Um, my question is going to be about the golf course, because it seemed like all the other aspects and. I will give the gentleman an award for the best uh, sport coat. <laughs> that is spectacular. It's actually the Donald Ross tarp. I was thinking uh, maybe, yeah. Very cool. And, and I, will also, I will also note for the record that uh, Jack Nicholas is a fellow graduate from the Ohio State University. <laughs> but I think the biggest thing I wanted to inquire about uh, is the Donald Ross holes. The seven out of nine restored, not the full nine, which I believe the other three groups were uh, proposing. Um, can you speak a little bit about the golf course and the, the seven out of the nine Donald Ross holes? In sure. So, a court based on the 19th. Come to the microphone, please. Yeah, microphone. Thank you. 
um, Jim Wagner, by the way, uh, based on the 1925 plan, which the front nine was originally at the southern part of the property, we've, we've, we've preserved holes two through eight. Now, um, the reason why we weren't able to preserve nine, and, there, and there's, we're not saying we cannot, but we're trying to maximize yardage and maximize the space as best we can to not only challenge the local golfers, but if, if the, the, the city wanted to have a local or regional tournament that challenged the best, best players in the area or an amateur event, 6,400 yards, 6,500 yards might be difficult to challenge them because it'd be a very short uh, golf course for them. So we feel that sacrificing those two other holes to maximize the yardage of the golf course, moving the clubhouse to the northern part of the property is the best solution. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very good. Mr. Johnson? Uh, if, sir, if you could come back up to the microphone. I'm very curious as to your beautiful medallion that's on your chest there. Yeah, so um, many golf courses, there's been uh, roughly 300 members of the ASGCA, which is the American Society of Golf Course Architects. Um, it was founded by uh, Robert Trent Jones Sr. And uh, one of the founding fathers of that was Donald Ross, and he was the first president of the ASGCA, which is why we wear the tartan uh, in honor of him. Very impressive. I'm just um, overwhelmed by the, the number of people who've come through the doors today to present their idea of what uh, the golf course could look like, should look like. I almost want to say, well, let's just make this a cafeteria and I'll take one of those and <laughs> one of those and kind of smush it together and what's possible is just going to be worldwide, internationally outstanding. I really appreciate your presentation because you've given us the reason why your golf um, layout, golf course layout, is the way it is. Um, I don't know if you heard that there's used to be 27. Yes. So if you can't recapture something, you've given a value, valuable, interesting reason as to why not. I'm very intrigued by your renditions or renderings of what's going to face Atlantic Avenue, and you've taken the um, traffic from the high um, Highland uh, Drive, I don't know if that's the Highland Drive, mm -hmm. uh, away from that community, and I don't know if they'll appreciate it or not. I wasn't at the meeting the other day. That would have been one question I would have asked them. Would you not like to have less traffic come through your community? I'd like to um, ask you, and I didn't ask the others, and that's perhaps I'll get another chance. I don't know. There is on the east side of the golf course, as it's presently presented to us, something that um, I don't know what the city plans to do with. It's very unattractive. And I don't, you can't put a screen up. You can't grow trees overnight. I don't know if you made a note of that. Um, it's something that uh, I would really appreciate someone addressing if, if you could. And well, I apologize whatever. to the others, uh, the residents on the, East side of the golf course that I toured. I don't quite. Is that in the in the southeast corner. Um, yeah. Southeast, yeah. yes. Yeah, I think. Well, the, the, you know, obviously we'll have to increase some. Uh, you notice what I'm talking there. about. You, yeah, but yeah. I think it's to me it's it's more about safety. It's talking about here, right? Yeah, yeah. More about creating a safer environment for those homes, given the golf holes playing to the north with the housing on the right, and we would incorporate a vegetated buffer, an increased vegetated buffer to help not only screen out visibility of those houses, but to also uh, help provide better shelter to those houses from the golf course. Very good, I like that. I wish I'd ask the others. And eventually, perhaps the city will get there to help the residents too, because it's, um, you also had a, not a Ad site uh, plan or site now present site of homes on the south, and I I think that was the most difficult part of the golf course that I observed. Again, I'm not a architect of golf courses. Um, it just just was there, like yeah, in it your feels face. Like you're right and on top of it. Yes, yeah. it's, it, and if I don't know what your plans are for that, but I um, encourage everyone who's going to hopefully be. Uh, coming back to us with whatever we've told you today to maybe talk about those items because just thinking about it, it's, it's not very attractive as we look at it now. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your being here, and thanks for coming to Delray. Thank you. Richard Boston? Yeah. Um, I have a, just 
I'll start off with just a few of the highlights that I that I really appreciate the thought that that's gone into this. It really seems like you were you were listening to us from the beginning. Um, no retail. I mean, aside from the the restaurant that will be you know in in our in our clubhouse, um, there was no you know, retail square footage listed. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. No hotel. No hotel. Um, the scaling um, down into the community with the the, the, the town homes or the or you call big houses uh, concept, I think is a great idea. Will those be? Do you know yet today? Will those be for sale or for rental or? Uh, no, no, they'll be for rent. Um, be for rent. As we well. have okay. a few. Um, a few streets down in Boca Raton, we actually mm -hmm. built those. They were super successful. So those like are for rent as well. Yeah, the ones that are in Boca. Exactly, okay. they're larger units, you know, for families. So those yeah. are very popular. Um, I really appreciate speaking to um, the golf, uh, the golf interested audience, which is a growing audience even pre-pandemic. People that are interested in golf, they're um, they're going to Pop Stroke. They're going to the uh, you know three Top Golf. Top golf. They're playing a round of par threes. Um, that's, a, that's growing, and it's growing in every demographic, and a lot of people don't know that. Um, long form golf may not be seeing that growth, but the interest in golfing in some form factor is growing exponentially, and I, and I think it was really smart to touch on that. And we want to take advantage of that, obviously. Um, the home field for FAU Owls, um, I definitely think that the 7,000 yards would be essential to even being able to pitch that. Um, I think that's a, that was a great idea. Um, thank you for walking us through the, the elevations um, and the thoughtfulness behind all those courtyards. I can see with the, you know, the proper vegetation that you'd only see you know, parts of what is a large scale building. And, uh, um, and I like that we'd keep ownership of the clubhouse. That, that, that way we'd be able to control um, the, the rates there as well. And when we want to sponsor an event there, um, and that we're not held to anybody else's schedule or ownership. That's really important because we do that. We do that quite often. Um, so, quite a quite quite a few uh, highlights. My questions for you: You based your numbers on forty thousand rounds of golf, and my question is not: Do you think we can get to forty? Because we already do and beyond. Do you think that's too much? In your experience, forty to to be able to maintain a course. I know sometimes you can wear down a course, and that's actually part of our problem right now. No, no. Many public courses now exceed fifty thousand throughout the country. Yeah, yeah okay. fifty thousand rounds. That would be extremely high. Forty is a great number. I think it's very attainable. You do it now. Um, well, that was kind of the. We do way more than that, and that's actually right. why it's so hard to maintain it. It's, it's right, but I don't see that. I mean, many okay. courses exceed that number. Okay, great. Um, let's talk wells and the, the infrastructure for wells. We didn't touch on that at all. I don't think. I mean, there's a little bit at the beginning, but. So one of our partners, Kim Lee Horn, uh, who has collaborated with us on all of the projects that Juan and I are currently building, all the Midrise projects, we had several conversations with them. I understand they were a consultant to Delray, and they had examined the existing condition. We understand that there are two wells that are severely um, compromised, and others, um, in some components, can be reused. Some pumps can be reused. Some of the, the motor centers possibly can be reused. Um, their estimate to us, each well without the pumps and without the motor control center, would be between 500 to 600,000 per well. There are nine wells out there. Um, the pumps is really like 250, 300 thousand dollar proposition. So, we believe this project to be between 10 million. It could be as high as 13 to 14 million dollars if we were to do a full replacement. Our thought is to have a phased approach where we can work on the clubhouse and begin working on some of the Atlantic side activities while we tackle the wells collaboratively with Kimley Horn and, and Delray and just come up with a plan because it, it's pretty invasive, but we certainly want to tackle that work before we start working on the golf course improvements. The funding of those improvements to the wells is not included in your proposal? So right now from the financial analysis, um, Part of the $25 million results in a $5.5 million benefit to Delray. And the operation of the course and the, and the revenue that's as a result of that will be contributed towards that. So once we get a little bit deeper into the evaluation of the wells and the condition of, of the existing conditions and what can be reused or not reused and needs to be addressed immediately, we then decide you know, how best to approach this on behalf of Delray. So, so while it looks like it's $25 million, and 5.5 of that would be going to us for our use. 
it would pretty much be tagged immediately uh, for, for the wells, and maybe even more, which would have to come out of our pocket, it sounds like. At the moment, yes, but we feel the that the revenues control. will, be, and you know, the tax benefits can be used to offset some of those costs. Okay, and like a lot of the applicants have mentioned today, you also, there is flexibility in having a conversation in regards to, in regards to your project, in regards to some give and take and some details. Oh, absolutely. Okay, because yeah, that, that's, that's been mentioned by e each one of the applicants today. So, you know, that's exactly the reason why we have the team that we have together. We're, you know, we're here to listen and make quick adjustments, but move quickly. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Um, I have just a couple of questions. The 20% um, workforce housing, Neil, you know the question I'm going to be asking. Is he here? 120% oh. AMI, most definitely. What is it? At 120, 120%? Yes. Okay. All the units? 120% AMI. All right. I know that if you guys are hanging out, you know that's my question. <laughs> All right. Very good. And um, let's see here. The seven acre fee simple part of this, is that inclusive of the... Um, of the clubhouse because it looks like that's part of it. So how are you how are you dividing that off? Is the parking lot the city's? Is the um, clubhouse where is that break? Yes. So the seven acres does not include the clubhouse. Okay. Um, so if you have this this page in I front do. of you, everything, including the clubhouse and the parking lot behind it, is you know public. Will be the city's. So, in other words, the line where you're asking for this fee simple will go somewhere in between the clubhouse and that building that's next to it. Exactly. All, okay. all the way to the church. Right. So. so, to me, I mean, just looking at it from the standpoint of, again, when we were talking about how much of this is really um, green space being taken over, we have currently about four square, I guess, we say four um, acres roughly. Um, less um, the the um, I guess you would start with the six acre or the seven acres less the four that that's where the, how you would be looking at it just from my perspective Annette so oh. a little little over three acres that would be contributing to what was once green space uh, of this ground of these entire um, all these acre all the acreage if I'm not mistaken. Well, I think something to point out is we are relocating the clubhouse. So yes. currently that clubhouse and current parking. No, I'm, I'm taking that space. away. Okay. In other words, I'm, I'm exiting oh, that you. out because I want to make sure that the constituency understands that we're not going in and getting an additional, yes. you know, seven, seven acres on top of what was originally there. So you have to kind of X that out of your, exactly. your amount. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes, yes. makes sense. Yeah. Okay. That way yeah. the understanding is, is that it's not all green space that's being um, covered over. Right. And again, like the first uh, applicant, correct. The um, it's not a cell phone tower. The AM yeah. tower and the radius yep. of unused property around that as well. All right, and then um, Mr. Neal, you don't listen very well. Uh -oh. Seventy-one sixty is yours. Seventy-two forty was the first as far as uh, yardage. So you're not the biggest, the most yardage. I just have to bring that up. Unless there's a mistake that they made, or I wrote down. As far as I know, uh, based on the review of CBRE, the first proposer yep. didn't include their yardage in their proposal. Got it. And don't know whether what was included in their proposal, because I haven't been privy okay, to yeah, them. Yeah, they so. came up and they said it was 7240. So just so you know, maybe, they, know just, they, maybe they found your bit. number and then put a number in there that's a little bit more. No. I don't know. But you guys are both well in We're advance of that 7,000 um, yardage uh, figure. Thank Good for you. you. Um, and uh, okay, so who then will be? If I understand this, just make sure that I'm understanding. You can, you, Neil, you're probably able to answer this. Who runs the show at the? It's it's the city. The city is going to be operating that clubhouse 100 percent, or is this a management company that is coming in to run it, and then the city will work with the management company? My my client's intent is, if selected, mm -hmm. to uh, find the best golf uh, course operator right. out there and manager and have them manage and operate the clubhouse right. in conjunction with the golf course. And then who maintains also the course and um, the maintenance of that clubhouse during this time frame? Yeah. Are we the also talking the same? The management company, that same management company. All right, very good. That's just, those are the questions that Absolutely. I had. Oh, and one more. There was a 99 year here. That's not anything to do with any sort of, uh, it just was showing us how much everything would come to in 100 years. Yes, absolutely. Okay. 
Very good. Anything and else? Yes. Yes. Would like Go right ahead. Ask, ask them. The apartments are going to be managed by a separate yeah. company, and any problems the city might have, it's as if they're not there. They could be downtown or wherever else there's rentals. It would be privately owned. The related group is going to be the manager of the multifamily. So um, you're going to be stuck with related group for ever and ever and ever. Okay. Okay. All right. And Vice Mayor. Thank you. I just had one other question. Sure. You had a slide about the average walk-in rate. And I yes. see for residents, summer it's $14, in season the high is $35. Are you telling me that for a Delray Beach resident, if I want to play in January, $35? Uh, yes, correct. Okay. Sounds good, yeah. Well, it's 14, but right. maybe even 10. You'll, you'll have a heat stroke. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's very impressive to, to make the improvements with everything, yet keep a very affordable rate for the residents. So that really stood out. So thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Early. Is everybody else good? <laughs> Neil, uh, Ron, Matt, Timothy, Juan, Ray, Jim. Thank you all very much for giving us a great presentation, answering all of our questions, and coming out and, uh, you know, actually responding to this. This is really great. We've, we, we really appreciate it. You did a great job. We're very excited. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you have a good lunch. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so any other questions or concerns? Mayor, I just yes. need to clarify one thing, sure thing. Um, related to your question, just because all these proposals are so different and unique and creative in the way that they brought to us what they did. Um, with the related group in your question about who would run it, that would be a separate RFP process that the city would do, and we would be funding that through our um, income from the, the green fees and the golf carts, the, all of that, or however the city chooses to do that. So kind just like clarify. what's happening now. Correct. Okay. So we would be doing something separate related in their proposal um, suggests that they could put us in contact with several top top maintenance groups. Okay. okay. Very good. All right. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. that. Thank you Have much. a great afternoon. Thank you. All right. And if there's nothing more, I'm going to adjourn the workshop or the special meeting. I guess it was. We're done. Oh. I don't want to hear again.